Hey guys, it's Smithy here. Welcome back to a brand new podcast. And today it's only me and Stephen. So say hello, Stephen. Hello, everybody. So this is episode six. It's finally here. I think we are like uh, two months uh, delayed. Hiatus. Um, so pretty much what happened since the podcast, uh, the last podcast. Um, that was... That was age. That was in April sometime. I think it was. Uh... There, I can check it right now. Actually. Okay. Alrighty. Yeah, give me one second here. Da, 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 yeah. Da, da, da. Hmm. You really, you really wished you two would put the subscriptions in order, in alphabetical order. <laughs> It'd be nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah somebody typed <clears throat> that into Google. But uh, I think uh, – I don't remember if we did pass my birthday. My birthday was on April the 25th, and I went out for that night. So I couldn't do it that night, and that was on a Friday. And then I think the week after that, David ha- David's mum had her, ber- had her uh, baby, and Stephen had a family around his house. April and then, 20th. So like April, April 20th, uh, you know. That's quite long, but we're back tonight. I, I gave a channel update video uh, this week saying that me and Stephen were going to kick off the podcast again. Um, we, we've we been trying to get it so that we could all uh, launch it back as like with the with me, Stephen, and David. But David's like really busy with uh, real life stuff. Um, David's a really busy guy, so it's just try, you know trying to get to a a point in his life where he can, you know, pretty much have time to do this, have time to do that, get organized and juggle a few things around. So it's just me and Stephen tonight. So hopefully we'll be back next week. Yeah, hopefully. Um, so Stephen, we have a brand new series kicking off me and you, don't we? Yes, we do. The Minecraft series. Yes. Now what's really interesting with this series is that, there's no real desire to to like just just kill the Ender Dragon and end the series there, is there? So pretty That's... much, uh, pretty much, depending on how long uh, the Minecraft world can keep us interested in it and what sort of stuff we get into on there, we can we can still continue it on to the PS4 when you get the PS4. And Minecraft comes out, we can still continue the the Minecraft world on that, which, which is really helpful because yeah. Um, yeah, the great thing is is that the the Minecraft worlds will be able to be converted over to the PS4, so you won't lose anything. Which is which, nice. Yeah, which I, I'd imagine wouldn't be kind of hard to do, but it's a nice feature to know that that was in there because that was always a worrying point of me for starting a series on Minecraft because. I didn't want to lose all the hard work because as soon as pretty much when every game gets converted over from PS3 to PS4, I doubt I'll even turn on my PS3 anymore. It's going to be rare. Yeah. It's going to be rare. I mean, maybe if they do like a good PlayStation Plus deal with a PS3, sometimes they do that. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, let's talk about a new series. We started it uh, this week, didn't we? The Tuesday, or like last Friday, I think we started it. Yeah. Um, so far, we've only got, I think, three episodes recorded. I was actually putting them in a folder the other day to get them rendered out with. Um, so none of them, before this podcast goes up, none of them are out at the moment. The reason for that being is we want to get um, everything pretty much sorted. We want to get a house sorted and then... We want to interact with you guys, like, what do you think we should build? What do you think we should do? Do you think we should go down this cave? Um, and then, you know, we've only got a few, like, minor episodes to do. I think in our last episode, we were pretty much uh, finishing the house off. We were just securing the front, right? Um, yeah. So the, the house is pretty much built. Uh, no spoilers intended as to what it is or whereabouts it is. Um, so, you know, you've really got something good to look forward to there. But like I said, there's no desire in this world. It should be good. I think David might be joining us on that one as well. Uh, yeah, we're gonna, we'll see what we can do, though. A little later on there. But, I mean, 
Uh, I, I'm not really... The, the thing is, with, with Minecraft on the PS3, where I lose out, is you do everything. Um, like, the world isn't that big. Uh, you sort of, like, die out a bit of it. Like, sometimes I'll play Minecraft, and I'll play it for, like, a, a week and a bit, and then I'll go back to the next day, and I'm like, I'm bored of this, you know, and I have to take, like, a week break off Minecraft. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not that Minecraft's boring, it's just that the world isn't big enough um, compared to PC. On PC, it, the worlds are huge. So, yeah. And, and on, on, Xbox, on Xbox and PS3, that's where we miss out, is that the world just isn't big enough. But I th- the PS4 version is going to be 36 times as big. So it's going to be a big, hefty world. Uh, more biomes to explore uh, and everything like that, so it should be fun. And I, I think the importance of having someone else in the world can sometimes help, you know, keeping you on alive. Yeah. And especially doing like a series where you interact with subscribers and you're like, oh, we want you to build this, we want you to go here, you know, and everything like that. So it should be quite good. So let's uh, let's recap on recent events. Um, E3 has come up. E3 oh, went on a month ago, a month ago. we're going to uh, recap it anyway. Yeah, just because we're interested in a few games that were there, and we haven't done a podcast since April. So, um, you know, after did you watch E3? Did you watch all of it or most of it? Uh, I watched... I actually didn't even watch anything from E3. All I did was pretty much watch... Trailers? Not even that. Just recaps oh. from different channels. Yeah. I mean, I watched uh, some of it. I was very interested to see what Activision were doing with Bungie and Advanced Warfare. Um, I was also interested in um, any like Rockstar news. Um, any... Yeah. <clears throat> I was in, I'm interested in uh, a lot of car games this year. It seems to be... This year seems to be the year for car games. Mm-hmm. There, there's so many car games coming out this year. Well, I love racing games, so that's a good thing for me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and also the good thing is that uh, Gran Turismo 7 is in development as well, but it won't be out this year, it'll be out next year. So, you know, Gran... Uh, making it good, I guess. Yeah, well, well I think the, the thing is, is that you really have to to get a year's work under the next generation to make a really good game. You, you've got to understand the hardware and, you know, you don't yeah. really want to... When you, when you have a big reputation as Gran Turismo, you, you can't afford to mess up, really. Yeah. So it's really important that you understand the, the whole hardware, you understand how it works. You don't want to have a game that's full of bugs and issues. I mean, Gran Turismo is... It's released every year, right? Uh, no. Gran Turismo is released... GTA... Not GTA. Uh, Gran Turismo 5 was released in 2010, and then GT6 was released in 2013. 13. So it's sometimes... Two to three two, years? Two to three years, yeah. So when you release a game every two to three years, you, you really have no excuse for mess up. You, you can't say... Oh look, this is down to our poor coding. You know, you've you've had two years to produce this. You know, so you know, unlike Call of Duty or Battlefield, you know, something that is like a, a rush development. You know, you can't, you have no excuses when you develop a game for two to three years for for why this didn't work, why this didn't happen. You know, why am I dropping frames, etc. So you know, Gran Turismo uh, comes out next year, but. Hey, there's a there's a ton of car games coming out. There's a ton of zombie games. There's a ton of like decent uh, campaign games, uh, multiplayer games. But you know, uh, something you talk about one of the one of the key factors. You know, maybe we both focus on E3. You know, just for the Call of Duties. Um, did did you check any Advanced Warfare workout? That's another thing. I really did not pay attention from E3 at all. I was very lacking with that. I wish I would have paid more attention to it, but I didn't. Mm, I, I'm, I mean, I kind of want to to see 
I, I want to see where Advanced Warfare can take off uh, and see where it can go. But uh, I just get this urge with Call of Duty that I'm just losing hope. I, I, I'm i not even getting it. I've already told David, I've told everybody, I'm not getting it. I'm not spending $60 on another flop. Mm, well, I mean, it's going to be obviously focused on next gen. So well, most likely, yes, of the, course. The previous gen of PS3 and Xbox 360, that, that's even been being developed by another company, so that's obviously going to be a flop because you won't be able to do most things on, on there that you can do on PS4 and Xbox One. Um, but, I mean, I think I can only give Advanced Warfare and Sledgehammer a go, uh, and if I don't like them, then I'm done because... I will always buy a Treyarch game just for zombies because I enjoy playing zombies. Um, yeah. So zombies is fun, and I know that if the multiplayer is a flop, then Treyarch out of the other two are more than likely the favorites to fix their games and, and be like, okay, we know we messed up, we know this game's boring, we've changed this, we've changed that, we've added this, um, you know. Uh, and to be fair, zombies is you know pretty much like another game. That's added. Yeah. So, you know, Advanced Warfare, you, you can only hope. Um, I know that Capture the Flag's back uh, in there, yeah. so that will be interesting to see. I know they ha- they're having their own, like, league play kind of system in there. I uh, mean, yeah, I- I've seen a little bit, and I mean, like, five seconds of yeah. gameplay. It's, it's, I'm not joking. I It looks like I'm playing Titanfall. Yeah. It looks like I'm playing Titanfall, and that game was that was an overhype. Oh yeah, most definitely, most definitely. That uh, game was too much of an overhype. Yeah, I, I think the thing with Titanfall is that you can people say it was a good game, it did well, it it had people playing it for a couple of weeks, and people are still playing it to this day. People are still buying DLC and everything like this, but I think. With a new company, when you're making a new game, you kind of want it to fail first time, don't you? To be honest, because if you allow it to fail first time, when most of the time they should fix it. Well, yeah, but the, well, they did fix a lot of issues. Um, I think where they let themselves down was the multi-platform thing. How it was only tied to Microsoft only. Mm-hmm. That was a kind of bummer, you know. That was a stab in the back. But when you're a new studio, you have to take sacrifices, and Microsoft offered you know a better service than what sony did and i was actually reading a report um ages ago that sony actually wanted titanfall to be a vita only game Hmm. so it would have been interesting on vita i guess i guess but uh no uh, titanfall was a huge flop and everything like this but if you if you're into making games and you you want to make, I don't know, three games to like a series, so like Titanfall 1, 2, and 3, mm-hmm. you obviously want the first one that failed so that when it comes around to the second one, you can say, hey, look, better. yeah, we improved this. I mean, if your game is a success at first, how do you top that, you know? And if you make a really good game that's solid that everyone loves first time, when the second one comes out, what if that standard's lowered and people are just that's, like, you that's know? That's the problem with Call of Duty. Hmm. They started off with a bang, and then they completely went to shit. Well, I don't know. I, I think I think it's Which, fair to say Infinity Ward started off with a bang, and then Treyarch started off with the shit and gradually got better, and Infinity Ward gradually just drained Call of Duty out of everyone. Uh, yeah, I can agree with that, yeah. Because I truthfully haven't enjoyed an Infinity Ward game since MW2. Yeah. I've I loved MW3. I thought it was a great game, but it had its flaws, which every game has its flaws. But oh, I, yeah. I just Ghost is completely unplayable. Oh I, God, that's it was painful. It was that's painful. What, it was very painful. I thought I was betrayed for what I saw. Mm. You see, the worst thing about that is that it was. Uh... Like, you know, going back into this, you know, you want your second game to to do a bit better than your first. Well, that was the second game under this new Infinity War team, and it was a brand new game, and they had better hardware to market their game at. So not only have they failed in the fact that, you know, um, they haven't done very well on both sides, but the fact that this is their second game and they didn't improve, they got worse, 
that doesn't show good signs at all. Yeah, not at all. Uh, I was also uh, reading this week that uh, an old uh, Infinity Ward team has departed Infinity Ward and made their own uh, brand. I forgot what they're going to name it, but another another war another brand of Infinity Ward now is making their own game. So yeah. first, there, so first there was Respawn with Titanfall, and that was an overhyped flop. And then yeah. we're going to probably have another overhyped flop. Yeah, I mean, they're going to make um, games for mobile and uh, next-gen consoles. So right, they are working on a shooting game. So, yeah, I'm, I'm glad that's happened because not only will that uh, make Activision and Infinity Ward step up their game now that they know that, you know, maybe Infinity Ward are planning their next game and these people know a few of their things that they want, and they can incorporate that into their own game, it might actually encourage them to make a better game. Possibly. Um, but, you know, talking of Call of Duty, I recently started a series, um, The Ultimate Call of Duty Challenge, and I, I went back and played MW3. Um, well, how was that? Well, Modern Warfare 3 was actually really good. Um, oh, yeah, I'm not going to lie. Game. This, this is coming from a guy that hated MW3 when it came out. Oh, I remember when I first met you, I couldn't goddamn stand you because you kept talking about how much you hated MW3. Oh, it was terrible, but it, it was playable. That was the thing with MW3. It was terrible, but it was playable. Uh, whereas Ghost is terrible, and it's not and playable. unplayable. Yeah, yeah, and unplayable. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> you know, I went back to Modern Warfare 3, and I think Infinity Ward may have messed up on there because... I think Infinity Ward have left double XP on on, it, on MW3 because I'm getting I'm like rank 20 something and I've only played 55 minutes and I've got no double XP on and um, you get like 200 XP per kill in team deathmatch and this is every game bearing in mind. I'm sure it's always been 100 points in yeah, it was 100, every. Yeah. Um, so I, I think Infinity Ward have actually left um, XP on, uh, double XP on Modern Warfare 3. I because uh, I made a brand new account so that I wouldn't have any prestige tokens or anything like that. So there's no way I've got double XP on. I didn't have any DLC co- year codes, you know, so I didn't have like any. Uh, tokens available or XP time added on, so I have no idea, but I think Infinity Ward have left that on. Um, but, uh, you know, talking about the ultimate Call of Duty, you know, I played Ghost. Um, I had to quit Ghost. Ghost wasn't doable. Oh, I I quit that. Oh, God, when's the last time I played Ghost? <laughs> oh, well, that was a while ago, because I can't remember. Um... All right, guys, I've just got to open another beer here. Some of the, some bitch gets to drink when you're 18 in England. That's bullshit. Oh, it's great. It is fantastic. I call it BS. <clears throat> I'm on the Budweiser. You have Budweiser over there, right? Oh, of course we have Budweiser. We but, have you, Budweiser. but you have your own brand of beer over there, don't you? So We have a million types of beer over here. <clears throat> yeah, but you all just like rum over there, don't you? Rum? Uh, yes, we have, we have freaking what else? Well, what do we have? We have freaking a lot. Oh my god, we have a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, I can just yeah. imagine like um like some poor guy just like um buying some like Walmart special branding beer. Trust me, that's, <laughs> not, that's not all that often you get to see that either. Oh really? It's not often. I mean, Walmart doesn't sell beer over here, but. Uh... I mean, I mean. <laughs> over here we have um, White Lightning, and White Lightning is very cheap, but very high in alcohol, so that's why, like, girls oh, will buy it. To... Alcohol content, I get it. <sighs> yeah, like, people will just buy cheap just to get big alcohol, but, uh, no, nah, I mean, I, I drink anything, really, from Budweiser to Carling to uh, Guinness to, you know, pretty much anything, put it in my hand, I'll, I'll give it a whirl. If I don't like it, then, I, you know, I won't drink it. <laughs> but, you know, um, 
I, I've been drinking underage for years. Now it's um, just. I wouldn't say that, but. <laughs> oh come on! What, uh... what, you, can't, you can't tell me off now. I'm pretty much legal now. I'm 19. Oh, you only have to yeah. be 18. Yeah. You know, so I can't get done. Um, yeah, your ass is lucky. <laughs> but I mean, talking about uh, like age laws, you have to be 21 over there to to drink. Pretty much. You have to be 21 to go into poker clubs and everything like that, right? And gamble? You be, yeah, you got to be 21 to gamble. Wow, we we can gamble at 18 over here. Oh, Jesus. And we can gamble at 18. Like, we can go into casinos at 18 as well, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, you can't do that in this country. You got to be 21. Yeah. That's about everything, really. Yeah, that, that's why uh, pretty much like all the Call of Duty competitors uh, love coming to Gfinity over here because uh, right next to where this event's at is a casino hall and they can pretty much just get drunk and gamble every night for whilst they're here. Yeah. But, I mean, what else do you have to be 21 for? Uh, Got to be 21 to own a firearm. Got to be 21 to a plot. No, you wait a minute. No. Yeah, you gotta be 21 to apply for a firearm per not a permit, but a permit to carry a firearm. Yeah, the gun. Got, for anyone that's know. Yeah, you gotta be 21 to. Oh, what else you gotta be 21 in this country to do? Uh. Pull out the Google. Uh. I'm pretty sure strip clubs will be 21 over there. They're 18 over here. We ain't got strip. We ain't got. We ain't got strip clubs over here. It's rare when you find them. It's yeah. where, I, where I live, at least. There's like not, there's been <laughs> one for four hours. Wow. Well, I'm not sure where the nearest strip club is over here, but I mean, who even goes to strip clubs? The fact that you have to pay, to, and you don't even get to see the full thing. Why not just open up Google, search a few things, and get it for free? Just pay the <laughs> internet bill. That's, yeah, I know. That that that's simple minded. I, I guess some people like the fact that they can spend their money and tell a bitch what to do for an hour or something. Yeah, just don't touch her. Yeah. It's it's just like um what's that there's a disease that people can have, um, where they where they don't like being touched. Oh, I don't know what that's called, but I know there's different diseases, HIV, AIDS. Oh no not disease. It's like um And a phobia? Yeah. Yeah, that's what Howie Mandel has. Who? You don't know who? Ha- oh, come! Well, it's an American thing, but all the American people know who ha- how Howie Mandel is. Who is he? Uh, you ever heard of the show Deal or No Deal? Yeah. Well, that, he was the host of that show. Oh, we have our own version over here. Um, Which, yeah, figured that. We have uh, Deal or No Deal, but our host is Noel Edmonds. Oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, you know who Noel Edmonds is, right? No, I don't. This is like, we're two different worlds here. Oh, well, yeah, this... but he was Mr. Blobby. Who in the hell was oh, Mr. My God. Blobby? <laughs> oh, oh, God. I thought that was an American show as well. I've never heard of it. Wow. I've never heard of wow. it. Wow. Never. You need to look at Mr. Blobby. And I can't believe you don't know who Mr. Blobby is. Such a disappointment. No, I'm not the disappointment. It's called Shabahaba Sling Schlong. I don't get it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, getting back to this E3 thing. Um, yeah, I don't, know where, I don't know how we got that off topic. but Yeah, but, I mean, you know, games and everything at E3, they all look great, but when you get them in your console, it's just like, oh, this is such a letdown. It's like um, there was that game Watch Dogs. Watch Dogs had actually uh, branded their game with previous in-game images. Um, oh, yeah, I remember that. Yep. And then they downstricted their image uh, this year at E3 and in the game. There is a way that you can put the graphics... Yeah, like there's that. a PC it's, mod. Yeah, there, it's, there. In the, uh, it's still in the game files, mm. but you can only do it on PC. Yeah, but uh, I mean, uh, E3, uh, I'm really excited to see how Grand Theft Auto V will come out on PS4. I'm, 
Yeah, uh, that's another thing I'm I'm kind of ex- wondering, wanting to see. How yeah. is that going to do compared to everybody else? Yeah, I, I think that's the one that stands out because it's it's Grand Theft Auto, and everyone loves Grand Theft Auto now, regardless of whether you still play GTA Five, which some people do, and I I, I can honestly would love to would love to still play Grand Theft Auto Five, but for me, I just got a bit bored of it. For me, the, although there's a lot to do online, there really isn't a lot to do every day online. So when you play it every day, you know, it's sort of just the same shit over and over again. You're playing the same sort of missions. You know, I was really waiting for in for heist, but you know that hasn't come in yet. Uh, you know, and I, I think the the whole postponement behind heist is. Um, pretty much to me, looking like Heist is included in the next gen versions and not the current gen. I think that might be something they're doing too, because if you notice, I heard some rumors about a club DLC coming out or something. They're putting mm. in more nightclubs and strip strip clubs. Yeah. But well, the funny part about it is, Rockstar. You know, Rockstar has put has already have all their, you know, going to be released updates. Yeah. Yeah. For you know, for the current gen, they're gonna put it. They already have it on the next gen version. Yeah, I think um, I, I can understand why why they need so much time to do heist because although it's a big ask and it's a big risk by but, asking for it and making people wait for it because when people want something, they, they will only now. yeah they will only wait a certain amount of time. They won't they're not they're not waiting forever. And um, as soon as that new game comes out something like Watch Dogs or something that, that will they listen that to them. up. Yep. That, they, they go straight to that. Um, and Actually, I have a good example of that, too. You want to share? Yeah, I will share. I will share. This is... Now, this is about people from your country that don't know how to make a game. They're called you Technics. Wait, you do know that Rockstar is owned by British people? Oh, are they? Well, they know how to make a game. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, well, you technics doesn't know how to make a game, especially a NASCAR game. All so right. I'm tell you. Now, NASCAR 14 was released. All it was released back in 2013, uh-huh. and we were supposed to get a patch. Uh huh. After you know the NASCAR's very first race was called the Daytona 500. Uh huh. We were supposed we were supposed to get a patch to fix a bunch of glitches and bugs, and add some new stuff into the game. Yep. Okay. Well, they released that patch last week. It broke the game more than it already was. Did it? How did it yes. break the game? Like, what, what else was new? Now, let's say I want to do a single-player race, just I want to race, you know, by myself against the AI. Mm-hmm. You can't do it. It loads forever. It's... What? How, how can they possibly fix a fix a bug and make the game worse. They literally, I don't know how they did it. And these are British people? Yes, they are. They are eutechnics. Uh, well, you learn something new every day, I guess, but, you know. Um, I mean, these guys made a game called Bad Mother Truckers. I don't, I don't know. I've never heard of it. Cause it's, probably, it's probably that bad. It's probably swept under the carpet. It's but that like game, an indie game thing. It wasn't an indie game, but, I mean... It was it was said that that game was is under the list right now of one of the worst games ever made by man. It's that bad. Oh, wow. Technics made that. And uh-huh. yes, I am say, saying reciting some evidence from a video done by a league account or by a league on NASCAR. Which I mean, that's another thing. For people that are doing leagues on NASCAR 14, they can't. You can't run your league now because of how much they broke the online. Is that, why is that why you're not training tonight? Well, I mean, my league is taking a break because my league president doesn't have internet. Uh-huh, okay. So, you know, we haven't been able to run races anyway. Nobody's been on to run the races. So, you know, it's been uh-huh. like, yeah. And it's kind of good anyway because it's, you know, this game's like pissing in a freaking, you know, it's like pissing in the wind. <laughs> but, so, are you going <sighs> to transform? Are you going to change the game? What do you mean change the game? No, we don't know. I don't know yet. I mean, I talked to my president. We, since he doesn't have internet, we're not really doing anything. But 
I'm going to tell you right now, and people, if you go on their on their Facebook right now and you would look at like the recent posts about the patch and everything, they released a patch on Steam. They released a patch on Steam. Yeah, but they they the do funny that. Part was, now the <laughs> funny part was, I forgot to add this into about the patch. Now they told us the patch was going to be the Daytona 500. The Daytona 500 was back in February. <laughs> it's July. <laughs> and we're just getting the patch and it breaks the game. Wow. That's uh that's special. And the funny part, and another funny part about it is Eutechnics has the has the balls to tell people, "Oh, well, we're we're getting your patch. We're getting the patch. The patch will be ready. The patch will be ready. The patch will be ready next week." They said that two months ago. Well, I mean, the worst thing is, is that here, here's what I never get right. Pe- companies uh, release patches for games to fix and to like I don't know, like maybe change a few things uh, and you know change a few codes, make it stronger and everything like this. And the worst thing is that they they get given hundreds of test consoles. So uh, I don't know what the Xbox One is called, but I know the PS3 one is called a Dex console. Uh, and basically, the Dex console allows you to install package files, so you can make your when you when you're developing a game, you can make it a PKG file. Oh, um, that's another thing. Ugh. Which which means you can install it on your PC, uh, PS3, and then play. Um, so the the companies get given Dex consoles. Now, Dex consoles is given to game developers to test their game to make sure everything works to change things and for when updates come out they can test them on these consoles and say look um, you know this doesn't work this doesn't work we need to fix this try it again install it update it see if it works Um, and the worst thing is is that Sony and Microsoft both give out uh, DeX consoles Uh, well not Microsoft because I don't know what they call theirs um, but you know, Sony give out Dex consoles to game developers, which are in contact with game developers, who will then send the PKG file over uh, and try it out for them. The fact that, and the worst thing is, is that these companies that make the patches have to pay Sony and Microsoft to get the update out. So to bring an update that breaks the game, where you have to fix a load of more shit and erase. The current shit and start again pretty much will go off a uh, off an old base game of the hardware you know of all the codes you then have to recode all the new shit you then have to find out what caused the game to break and then it's, you then have yeah. to pay sony again to get the to get the update out there so probably to nascar fans there's probably going to be a couple more dlc coming in for that game to pay sure, off this won't. The next, you know what the next patch is going to be? What? NASCAR 15. Really? Mm-hmm. And I'm going to tell you right now. The funny part about it was, I was reading some, you know, I was reading some sources here and there. Deep Silver, who developed, you know, who is the publisher of the game, mm-hmm. denied the patch over ten times. Wow. Because they knew how badly it was going to break the game. Yeah. And then Sony, den- Sony rejected it multiple times mm. before they allowed it. Yeah, I think it's. I think some companies just get that hype where they the game's in its best bit of life, and they have to get patches out so that more people will play the game. But, but yeah, most people buy a Eutechnic NASCAR game not for to have oh, yeah. fun. Because most people buy it just so they can do a league or something like that. Yeah. So it's more like a competitive game, like a a pro competitive side game, to something that like an average, I don't know, like a car racer guy would buy. I'm yeah, and I mean, if there's any you know, if there's any NASCAR fans watching this, I mean, you know what we've gone through. We went through NASCAR the game 2011 and the online. You couldn't even play the online. Oh, wow. Because as soon as you would start a race, half the field would be upside down. Oh wow, that's bad. And in NASCAR inside NASCAR the game inside line, which was last year's game, it was so broke to where you couldn't it was freeze. 
the mm. game would freeze out of nowhere. You get what's called the freeze glitch, where for a split second your car would stop, dead, you know, just dead stop. Wow. And whoever is behind you are gonna have a is gonna have a bad time. Yeah, I, I think um, there was a game on the PS4 that came out on the day. Uh, the PS4 came out, which I think was like November the 21st or something, somewhere around that ballpark, uh, maybe after the 15th or something like that. I don't know specifically when the date came out, but there was a free-to-play game called Blacklight Retribution. Um, oh, yeah, I remember that, yep. Which is a free-to-play game, uh, a very good game, and it was in open beta uh, up until uh, a couple of weeks ago. It's now a closed beta. It, it's gone. Beta's done. It's now a full game, right? Um, and when it was in beta, there was there was tons and tons of, tons of problems. You couldn't even invite your friends to join a party. You had to... If you wanted to play with your game, like uh, players, friends... You had to join them in a team deathmatch game, or whatever the game mode you wanted to play. There was no invite system. Uh, sometimes you'd spawn under the map. Sometimes hmm. you um, like get shot, kill the guy, and then just die. Uh, sometimes you'd fall off the end of the map. It was in closed beta. You, you know, you can't really expect much from a free-to-play game. But then uh, after beta. It, it's amazing. It, it really is. Um, I wish I had more time to play it, though. Um, although it has a lot of game modes. Um, you pay absolutely nothing. You can buy in-game credits to buy guns, etc. But if you don't want to, um, you can actually earn in-game currency to uh, purchase weapons, weapon attachments for a day or for a week or for three days, etc. It's a really good game. Um but I wish the system worked so that... Do you ever get one of these games where you buy like something in the game for like a day? Um, but it actually counts as a full day. It doesn't. So what, when you're on the game, I wish it was like an in-game 24 hours. So when you're on that game, you've been on it for 24 hours, it goes away. Instead of, you know, you buy this on the 8th, it's gone by the 9th. You know? I wish it was more, you know, in-game, based on an in-game 24 hours, not a day's 24 hours. Yeah. I really do wish that would happen with the games that I play. But uh, E3, uh, you know, there's a lot of good games there. There's a lot of good games to look forward to in 2014 and 15. And I'm sure um, Sony and Microsoft and, of course, Steam and whatnot will build up uh, a good... Uh, report for their future games and any company that does develop a game you know i wish you all the best and that you target all the the audience that are out there but uh mm -hmm. you know since our last uh also to tie in with the the thing with um sledgehammer the fact that uh the game is going to be based in 2054 now That's do you great. more future shit well, that's the thing. They say uh, they released a, like a sort of, not like update, like a kind of like article on the game story kind of thing, saying that everything in the game that is there is already being developed this to this day. So EXO suits are being worn today, are being tried and tested for. All their guns, um, their kill shrieks, and everything like this is already pretty much being tested to this day now what i'm hoping is for kill streaks i want i want to bring the nuke back i want to bring the chopper gunner um the ac-130 anything like that has to be mm -hmm. in the game has to be that's what all the fun's about when you're on a seven kill streak and you're like I'm almost near that chopper gunner. Time to slow down and get in my rhythm. You kill four more people. You got that chopper gunner. You're having a great time. You get 11 kills with that chopper gunner. You're like, oh, it's almost nuke time. You know, four more kills. Boom, you've got that nuke. And it doesn't matter whatever score you're on on Domination, Team Deathmatch, or whatever mm -hmm. map you're playing, that nuke comes in, you win the game. You, you know, nothing gives you that satisfaction when you, you that smile on your face can never be replaced yeah when when you get a chopper gunner 
and you get a nuke because you know as soon as you have that chopper gunner, it's nuke day. Nuke is going to be happening in this game if you have it on. Uh, you know, talking about Modern Warfare 2 and everything like that. Modern Warfare 2 is so great, but I've been trying to get Modern Warfare 2 fixed for a long, 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 long time. Trust me, um, they will never fix them. I don't think they will. <laughs> you see, I I was looking up uh, up a few things, and you know, uh, someone commented on on one of my videos saying, you know, isn't there a isn't there like a law? No, it was on Twitter actually. He didn't come out on one of my videos. He tweeted me saying, um, isn't there like a law case thing where if you buy something and it's completely broken? then you can actually sue Activision because it's not what you brought. You know, all the older CODs, from, even Black Ops 2 now, actually, Black are Ops hacked. 2 now are, are full of hacks, and they don't seem to be doing anything. Now, I know probably in the next two years, Activision is going to copy Halo and bring all the older CODs on PS4 and Xbox One. I already know that will happen because... Yeah. Activision copies everything Halo does because uh, they just do. Because I think Halo has more of a fan base community. Like the fans collaborate with the the whole game developers and they interact. Whereas COD, it, it to me at the moment it just seems as if COD and pro players interact. We don't really get to hear about pro players. Um. Uh, but also that that's another thing with Sledgehammer. Uh, there was actually a pub public player who used to play a pubs match all the time. He's actually a community manager, so he may listen to a few pro, uh, you know, pub players and whatnot this year. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, with Call of Duty and the older cards, I think it's a disgrace to still sell a game that is on shelf. It may not get the the players that you need in it to make up a daily rating compared to Ghost, but I could guarantee if those games were fixed and playable, there would be more players on there than there is on Black Ops 2, Ghost, Modern Warfare 3, and Black Ops 1. Hands down, if Modern Warfare 2, World at War, and COD 4 were fixed and 100% playable, doesn't matter if the one-man you know, one army noob tubes are still overpowered and whatnot, doesn't matter about any in-game things that should have been patched at the time. If all the hacks weren't there, I could guarantee they would be the top biggest three cards played. Here is well, here's here's my opinion on what they think. Okay, they think of it like this. Okay, we got our money. Yeah, we fixed yeah. it when we wanted to, when the game was at its peak. Oh, but wait, oh, it's over now. Are the new game's out? Nobody's yeah. probably playing it. So let's just go back. You see, here's a stupid thing. There's a thing called Activision support thing on Twitter, right? Oh, me, I love that. me, you, David, and me lately this week, I I've tweeted, you know, um, I took a quote from a White Boy video. White Boy said, you know, how can um, Infinity Ward, Activision, and Treyarch, you know, how can they take my money for a game that I paid $50 for or $60 for? Six, yeah. And I expect this game, whilst it's still online, to not be hacked. I expect you to support this. I've paid for this. When I brought it, it fully worked. Now it's a few years older. You, you've you've lost focus in it, and you know I'm not expecting you know guns to to be fixed and nerfed and you know unnerfed, etc. I'm not expecting that. But what I am expecting you to do is to stand by your game and say no to these hackers. You know, I'm expecting you to defend your game, something that you made and you published, and you're still putting out there to the public. You know, and I, I'm there on Twitter going, you know, it's a disgrace that you still sell these games. If this game isn't worth anything at all, like making you next to nothing money, I would rather you shut that game down offline mm -hmm. so that none of these hackers can still play it, so that no one can play it. And if you're not willing to fix a game and, you know, take money off from what the servers earn, then it should be a disgrace that you're allowing these hackers to upset legitimate Call of Duty fans and players. 
And I, I think it's a disgrace still to this day that they, they've they never come out and said, you know what, a lot of people have requested this to to be, you know, fixed. You know, I know uh, Wings of Redemption, uh, White Boy, Try Hard Ninja, you know, pretty much. Um, I could probably, you know, Syndicate even asked, you know, Tina uh, at Infinity War to get the game fixed. Hutch has asked many times, you know. The big people in the scene want the games to be fixed, and they're still saying no. They're still saying, oh, look, if you want the game fixed, report players in the in-game service. Well, this is older cards. They don't have this. And the worst thing is, is that the way they divert the, the, the escape out of this is they just reply saying, contact your console provider, so it's a.k.a. Sony or Microsoft. And Sony or Microsoft won't do jack shit because there's no way to test the Call of Duty hacks. There's no way for them to to look at someone's console and say, "Oh, look, this guy's running a a, a COD patch." You know, this guy's running a Call of Duty hack. There's mm-hmm. absolutely no way. The only way you can check is if they are on a uh, CX uh, PS3. For Sony reference, is a CX PS3. And you can prove that they are installing packaged files and they're on, um, you know, things to transfer patches over. And it, it's a shame that they allow this to happen. Yeah. But I do predict in the next three years, all the older cards will be on PS4, mm-hmm. um, more than likely. Um, so hopefully, you know, that, that happens and they, they update to HD textures and whatnot. Um, so... You know, uh, just to recap, you know, um, coming from someone that doesn't like Ghost and you've seen what Sledgehammer can offer or you've Mm. heard about what they can offer, you know, what do they need to sort of like balance out with like sort of from the game going from a Call of Duty game to being a Titanfall game? What do they need to balance out to make sure they don't overhype it and, and go to a Call of Duty game to some next level shit that destroys Call of Duty. What do they need to do to keep it a Call of Duty game? Uh, so I got to do a multitude of things. I mean, uh, uh, hmm. Hmm. Uh, I don't know. I'm kind of, they need oh, one thing, one thing that they need to do, to keep their games from being a you know a scrubby dubby bullshit game, they got to give the people more customization. Now I know in Ghost they really push that yeah. well a little bit. I mean not really, but <laughs> I mean here's the thing, okay. Now, yeah, glad you let us have our own character models, but it's only a costume. Mm. Okay. Now, do does it really? Do I really care what I look like in a game? No, I'm gonna be shooting somebody anyway. I could care less. I'm not in third person. I'm in first person. Yeah. But they need to let us have more customization. If they want us, if they should let us be able to create our own gun camos, to yeah. put that in the game to what, for what we want. If I want to put, if I want to smack LeBron James's face right on my gun, I should have the freedom to smack yeah. his face on my gun. Yeah, that that would be pretty good, and you know that would stop the. Well, no, it doesn't. It wouldn't really stop personalization packs. I guess. You know, if you were allowed to create your own camo on your own gun, you could sort of copy the two. But it's never going to be as good as an official, you know, this is it, you know. But, I mean, if you were al- – I mean, you've been allowed to put your clan tag and emblem on your gun. But if you could customize your own, um, you know, uh, camo on your own gun, that would be so good. And I think with the character customization, there's only certain much you can do. Now, I know – a lot of it has to be focused on your soldier because that's it, you know. Mm. But yeah, you you need to be able to do more when you when you give that opportunity out. Whether you you know Call of Duty Ghost brought this whole female thing in, you know you've really got to address the fact that 
not really a lot of people care what they want to look like. You know, people mess around with ghillie suits. People want, obviously, they want like a a darker, um, like not skin character, but character camo set so they can camp. People want a snowy one so they can blend in with the snow maps, everything like that. Yeah. You've really got to hit a home run. Um, I was listening to uh, a commentary uh, a while ago by Xbox Ahoy, and he was saying, what if they did like a a gun uh, customization where, you know, your gun was actually realistic and it had your marker in. So when your gun, when you've been using this gun for like a thousand kills, the gun starts to get a little older, you know, the the whole trigger but the whole trigger button gets a bit worn out. The whole um I forgot what he what he said, but he said, you know, uh things start to look a bit odd about the gun and it needs like a I don't know, like a refurbishment. When you pick up someone else's gun, you see the difference between your guns and everything like this. He wants to see like a more upgradable gun instinct. Yeah. Um you know, and with the other Call of Duty, you know, keeping it in balance with Call of Duty, I think everything has to have accountability. You know, everything has to be available to be countered. You know, it looks as if they're going for this Titanfall approach, um, but everything in the game has to be be available countered. So yeah. you you can't make anything overpowered. You can't make anything like in Call of Duty Ghost. The most regular gunfights are going to be a, a Remington. A vector or an MTAR. That's it. Yeah. You, you've got to, you've got to have a stable, balanced weapon. Air, you know, weapons. You've got to have, uh, you've got to work something out with kill streaks and like I don't know, like javelins and things to take down kill streaks. You know, nothing can be too powerful. Nothing can be too overpowered. Mm-hmm. Nothing can be too underpowered. You know, everything has to have a certain balance, which is kind of hard for Call of Duty Duty to do because they have so many fans. To please, but and you can't go too futuristic. Um, it has to. I want. I want there to be a Call of Duty where it's all realistic. It, you know, mm-hmm. if I want there to be a Call of Duty game where quick scoping isn't possible at all. It doesn't matter. You know, people say Black Ops One was that game, but no, you could still quick scope in Black Ops One. You don't go to a war and instantly you know pick up your Barrett 50 cal and think, oh, I'm going to quick scope in Afghanistan across the map you know mm-hmm. you, it's impossible to quick scope in real life because the guns are too heavy you know you cannot quick scope in real life i know it's fun for some people and but it's so annoying to get so many hit markers on a sniping guy and then get him get a one hit kill and he's quick scoped you and he's not even looking at you mm-hmm. it, it's so annoying that has to stop it, it's ugh, hate it and i think with this new Call of Duty, what they have to do is they have to have a certain range of game modes. They have to, now we see like uh, normally there's more than uh, there's around 15 game modes on I don't know maybe 18 odd maps or so. You have to have a certain amount of game modes. I want certain maps to be in certain game modes because sometimes I don't want to play maps like Derail all the time or. Or um, Siege, whatever it is in Ghost. You know, I don't want to play certain maps. I mm-hmm. want to be in a game mode where... Or they should make a, a playlist where they have, like, small map playlist. You know, and you only play certain game modes on small maps. Yeah. And I actually want the matchmaking to be actually working. When you bring DLC maps out, it's one of the most annoyingest things ever. When it says in the party, the matchmaking will only search for maps that everyone else in the party has. And then it picks a map that that guy in your party doesn't have. It's so yeah. fucking annoying because you told me the matchmaking wasn't going to search for a map. Why is it even looking for a map? You know, a match on a map that my friend doesn't even have. Fuck off. Get it out of the game. Fix your matchmaking. My yeah. friend doesn't have DLC. Let's just play standard. Or do what Modern Warfare 3 did. You know, Infinity Ward knew. Their maps for Modern Warfare 3 were going to be so bad, they allowed you to have a ban button where it wouldn't search for bad maps. And that was it. Simple as. That should be reinvented. Mm-hmm. It really is that simple. So, uh, a couple of weeks ago, 
um, Donald Sterling was arrested and everything like that. Now, I don't really want to talk about Donald Sterling, but I want to talk about JD2020. Now, JD2020, he was the Call of Duty Black Ops 1 community manager. He actually got sacked by his job for something he said about Donald Sterling. He said, right, uh, let, I want to hear your view on this this comment that he said. He said, um, um, Donald Sterling has the right as an American to be an old bigot in the security of his own home. He's a victim. When you were raised in, in an era when segregation was uh, perceived as right, that will stick with some people. Doesn't make him a monster. Now, would you agree with that? That just confused the sh living shit out of me. That made no sense right there. Right, he's basically saying that Donald Sterling was brought up in a time where black people were, I don't know, um, underrated by white people, where they were, you know, kind of like, you know, black people, you know, you guys should be around, you know. Uh, and now, of course, you know, black people are around, you know, there's multiple races, religions, etc. And, you know, you have to treat them fair. Now, JD2020 is saying that Donald Sterling is wrong to be mocked a monster now because he said this because it, when he was born in that era, it was okay to say that. And that will stick with him for the rest of his life because oh, he was yeah. brought up that way. Do you think that that's fair? Uh, well, first thing is, don't own a goddamn basketball team where half your freaking roster is black. <laughs> well, that, that's the thing as well. If he was racist, why is he why is he doing this? You know, half the team, or at least, um, I'm not being racist at all, but half the people who play basketball seem to be black. It's, I mean, you know, African Americans as it is. I, I know I'm going to have the NAACP knocking at my door in the next two <laughs> hours. I mean, pretty much, they are the main race, yeah. I guess, in basketball, which kind of gives them a bad rep as it is. Yeah, but... do, you ever, do you ever notice, like, um, the things that I notice about black people is that they seem to be a lot quicker at running than than white guys all the well, time. Well, we're pushing the uh, race bounder now. No, I'm just saying, generally, when, when I see... Um, a black and white guy race, the black one always wins. Pretty much. Most of the time. Uh, you know, so, you know, it, it's kind of hit and miss, really, but, you know, some people are fast, some people are slow. But, I mean, JD2020 actually lost his job um, for saying that, and he was getting a lot of hate for it. Now, that was obviously a couple of months ago. Uh, well, I haven't... Uh... I haven't read well, he's not the he, he's not the only person to mm -hmm. kind of back Donald Sterling. He's not the yeah. only person. I think the owner of the Timberwolves, I think, backed him up. I think, but I'm not sure. Well, do you think Donald Sterling was fair in what he said, or you mean JD2020? No, like, do you think Donald Sterling was fair to come out and say what he said and did? Well, first goddamn thing was he should have kept his mouth shut because mm. now you just gave the NBA and the National Basketball Association two million dollars, which really is only about worth fifty one dollars to you to him. But I mean, and now they're trying to make him sell the team, and he doesn't want to sell, and yeah, mm. and it's that nice, nice shit. Yeah, yeah. all I that mean, stuff. Opinions, uh, you know, if you have a strong opinion about something and you know it may harm, you know, how people feel about you, it's probably keep, best to keep it keep between your yourself damn or mouth shut. keep it between a section of friends that have, you know, the same opinions and same thoughts based upon you. It's not based, you know, when you're such a high guy that people, you know, of course, black people who didn't know him, you know, people who play for his team respected him. And wanted, you know, good things from him and to do good things from him and shared a friendship with him at least. Uh, you know, they, they don't want to hear this. You know, they, they will be highly shocked. And I'm pretty sure that if he doesn't sell the team, then most of the team will walk out on him. I'm pretty sure. No, legally, I don't think you can do that. But, uh, I mean, for the I mean, most 
I mean, for the most part, I got to say that it's, you know, it's come down to that surprise where, you know, yeah. it's come to the point where, you know, when all that was released, the Clippers were in the NBA playoffs. Mm. Obviously, they didn't make it past the first round losing to, no, wait, no, they went to the, did they go to the second round of the playoffs? I'm not sure. I think I know that, uh, I can't remember where they went in the playoffs. They didn't, they didn't go far, though. But, you know, all this was going on, and their players would, you know, refuse to wear their Clippers, like, team shirts. They had yeah. them inside out. And, but, wow. you know, it's... So they don't have, uh, over here in football, as you call soccer, we have a a thing where... If the guy doesn't like um, playing for his team, he can hand in a transfer request. Now, the club can either accept this or reject this. If they accept it, it pretty much says to other clubs, we are selling this player at this price, give us your offers. If they reject it, then the player can ask for his contract to be terminated. Now, this uh, you know, is pretty much declaring him no longer a player and he becomes a free agent, which allows him to sign for anyone else in any league, any division, whatever. Um, and he can sign for them. The only problem is is that the club loses out on money. So when a guy hands in a transfer request, they normally accept it because they know they'll get money. And if they don't, then he may declare his contract to be cut off and they'll, they'll lose out on money because he'll go as a free agent. And the other way they can do it is... Um, some guys in their contracts have a release clause. So if a guy, if a manager, well, not manager, if a, um, if a club owner says, you know, I'll, I'll pay this much for this player, say has a release clause of 10 mil, if they pay 10 mil or anything over 10 mil, they are given permission. Um, and they oh, are, Here we go. All right. So... Going back to that Clippers discussion, they didn't make it. They only made it to the second round of the playoffs. Uh huh. They beat the Golden State Warriors, and that went to seven games. And then they went against the Oklahoma City Thunder, which went two, four, six. That went six games. Uh huh. Please continue. What you're saying. Um, and they have a like a buyout clause, and if they meet that, they'll. They aren't give like the club don't have to make up their mind whether they want to give permission. They're given direct. Complicating. <laughs> they're given directly permission to speak to that player and offer him a contract, and the club have to accept it whether they want to sell him or not. Uh, the other case is is that if he wants to terminate his contract, um, the player can or the player can go on strike and say, "Look, I don't want to play with you anymore." I want to play for someone else, so either sell me or I'm going on strike and I won't play at all. So, you know, f do they not have anything over there like that with NBA? No, nobody really refuses to play. Uh -huh. I mean, it's, if you want to get traded, you go to the GM before the trade line deadline, which is like two weeks, like the third week in February. Mm -hmm. And then... You know, you can just go to the GM, you know, it all depends yeah. on the type of player you are, and you say, I'm done here, I want to go to a new team. Yeah, football is crazy of her. I mean, some players... Um, yeah, that sounds very complicated. Gareth Bale was sold to another club for 85 mil. Alrighty. Cristiano Ronaldo was sold to a club for 80 mil. Luis Suarez... <laughs> The club that I support, Liverpool, sold him to Barcelona for 75 mil. Uh, you know, some of these gifted players that just run around on the pitch can be sold for so much. So normally when a guy hands in a transfer request, they just go. But, you know, uh, talking about football, did you watch America in the World Cup? Uh, not at all. Not at all. I mean, I watched England, but, you know, let's not talk about England because we didn't even win a game. <laughs> mm. At least yeah, America did, yeah. qualified uh, and got through the group stage. Yes, but we didn't go that. We didn't go too much further than that either. <laughs> yeah, but you, I watched uh, most of America's games. Um, I fell asleep when they were playing Portugal, and they ended up draw, drawing that. But um, I watched them against Belgium, and they had a really good, 
a good spell where they, they could have put a few chances away in extra time and whatnot. Um, but what was really inspiring by America is I watched this uh, commercial um, that was like uh, a chant that they like it was it's obviously a song but the whole of America was behind them singing this I believe that we can win thing um, and it, it's really good that America who you know soccer really isn't big over there but when the World Cup is on the whole nation of America supports it. Which is nice to see, I guess, because yeah, <clears throat> I guess compared to everything else that's big in America, soccer or football really isn't one of them. No, and it's whereas not. soccer and football is the biggest game in England, the biggest sport in England, and probably across the world apart from America. Pretty much, yeah. So, <clears throat> you know... Um, so get back to a bit of gaming. The PS4 has outsold the Xbox One for the sixth consecutive month in US, right? And this is um, this is even with Xbox selling uh, without Connect model. Now, of course, we're both um, you know PS4 love, you know PS well Sony lovers, I guess we can say. Yeah. Um, and we both like the PS4. We both loved the PS3. We both loved the PS1, and PS2. So we're pretty much Sony fanboys. Um, although we, we've both had an Xbox 360 as well, right? Yes. Um, and I, I guess you probably owned the original Xbox, right? Uh, I don't know which Xbox I had. I had a black one. Yeah, maybe. Um, but I mean, what you know. How do Sony? Well, how do Microsoft equal the sales? Like, you know, I thought the answer was to, you know, questioning whether they can compete with Sony was, you know, get rid of the Connect. But it seems that's not it. Actually, their sales did go up two hundred percent, but that was not all that much. Yeah, sorry if you heard that, guys. We're just opening another beer. But I mean, um. Dan, don't get too drunk over there. Dude, I wouldn't even get drunk off these yet. It'll be a long time before I get drunk. Okay. Three um, hours later. <laughs> if we go on for three hours, that is. Oh, um, yeah. Um, but, you know, actually, I'll probably drink till till I get to bed, pretty much, which could be, you know, another three hours or whatever. But, Jesus Christ. Um, you know... <laughs> I, I, you know, I thought the answer would be to sell without Connect, and of course, you know, for the Call of Duty fans, they have the Call of Duty uh, maps coming over there from Sledgehammer. But you know, selling without Connect, and I know the sales have gone up and everything like that. There's still no real competition there. Now the answer is, you know, if this Connect thing doesn't pick up without Connect, I think they've got to admit. You know, the Xbox One just isn't as good enough as the PlayStation 4. No, I mean, the, I we both owned a three, an Xbox 360. I owned you know, I owned an Xbox 360. You did, I did. I think I just repeated myself. Yeah. But, <laughs> I mean, I just want to say right now, I don't, I mean, I don't, uh, I don't get it. How, how can people play it? Well, I, you know, I owned it in... Before the prime time took off, like when I owned it, it was uh, all the very old uh, game menu. It was very early. There was none of this um, create your own avatar shit and everything like that. Mm -hmm. uh, I owned it in the very early days of its life cycle. Right? And then I got my PS3 and I got rid of it because Sony were just so simple with the PS3. There was no advertisements. It was just here. Create your avatar. Sometimes we go down. Sometimes we have maintenance. And, you know, sometimes your occasional older Call of Duties get hacked easily. But, you know, yeah, have a free online to play system. You know, that was it. Mm -hmm. That was appealing to me. Um, but I think Sony have just got better and better on as the PS4 goes along. And every. It won't be long until most games that are on both of the systems will be shown as PS4 primary. You know, this game footage was brought to you by Sony PlayStation. Yeah. Um, because 
the Sony PS4, although P- PC is more powerful, and and the PC are always will say you know you know PC play you know keyboard and mouse for the win. Yeah. You know, some people just don't like playing on PC, and some people enjoy consoles. You know, which I'm one of those people. Yeah, I, I think it's a lot harder to get into PC gaming than console gaming. Uh, yeah, if, it's yeah. Once you do console gaming, you don't want to go to PC. No, um, but it won't be long until pretty much most games will will say. You know, this trailer was brought to you by PlayStation. This trailer was brought to you by... I mean, this gameplay was brought to you by PlayStation, you know. Because mm. Sony is for the gamers, and the Xbox One is for the entertainers. More like for the TV. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, here's how bad Xbox is doing right now. There's an advert over here. I don't know if you have the same advert over there, but... We have an advert for the Xbox One, and in the advert it says Xbox On. So when you're watching this advert and your Xbox One is in the yeah. same room, it will turn on the Xbox One uh, every time uh, that advert comes on. As uh, soon as he says Xbox On, the Xbox One will come on if it's in the same room. Oh, that's stupid. And, uh, right? It, it is really stupid and really sensitive, but... I mean, if the Connect, if the Connectless Xbox One doesn't catch up to PS4 sales, which I think is over nine million now, because Sony said combined between the Vita, the PS3, and the PS4, they've sold over one hundred million. Um, so you know, you sort of gather that the PS3 sold about eighty million, Vita ten, and PS4, round about 10, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, um, if the Connectless Xbox One doesn't do as well as planned, then that they clearly have an issue because I, I don't know. I, I don't know where or or how they went wrong. I know they stepped backwards in RAM and GPU, etc. Mm-hmm. But they, they have no excuse because the last console battle, Xbox One, by you know, by miles, uh, Sony, I mean, Sony just weren't ready for for Xbox 360 versus PS3. Sony went wrong. Yeah. Um, you know, and you know but, this time they're back on top. Yeah. Somehow they were able to fix their mistakes from you know from the PlayStation 3, and yeah. were able to make a console that they knew was going to beat the Xbox One. Yeah, I mean, Microsoft needs to get their finger out of their ass because it's clearly shoved in there a lot. <laughs> because if you notice, it's like trying to, you know, with the Xbox One, what makes me what makes me laugh a lot is I want I want to go back to that very first. E3 conference back last year when oh, they announced yeah. the Xbox yeah. One. I want to count how many times whoever did that presentation said TV. Because oh, I think it yeah. broke a world record. Yeah, but I, I mean, Sony did that a lot in their E3 conference this year. Well, they didn't do it as much as Microsoft. I don't know, but they, they did it a few times. But I, I think competition in the console world, you know... Forget the Wii U, forget whatever other oh, consoles God. are out there, because you know He's the real console, that. the the real console competition is between Xbox One and Sony PS4. You know, mm-hmm. um, and, and you know I like competition because when competition is tight, Xbox will do something better, and Sony will always do something better to achieve that. Sony will do something better, and Xbox will strive to do something better. And it's mm-hmm. a great battle because they bring exclusive games, they bring great content, they bring great apps, they bring oh, yeah. great DLC. It's lovely for a gamer. You know, if you're lucky enough to own both, fair play. If you want one, get the one that your friends are on. That's it. Simple answer. There's no going with the best console just because it's better than the other one. You know, the best way to decide which console you should get is to go with the one that your friends are on. But, um,. Well, so... I mean, that could, for me, that could go in a lot of different directions. 
Yeah, but you want to obviously go with the one that you know your fr- with the friends that you play mainly with. You know. Well, that's on PlayStation, yeah, but yeah. <laughs> Everybody's um, schools on your everybody at my schools on your Xboxes and your fanboys. Yeah. Which that's gonna change soon, but <laughs> I, I, I would imagine it will change soon. But I mean Xbox versus PlayStation, you know, there's really no winner. They're both great consoles. That the desire for each console is just in the wrong place. Yeah. You know, there isn't a console that suits everyone. There isn't a console that strives or has the has the nation behind it in saying, look, this is actually the best console. This does everything you want, supports absolutely everything. There isn't one that just brands everything, you know. Um, and it's a shame, but, you know, if you're a gamer, go for the PS4. If you're an entertainer and you like your TV and... Yeah, you want, um, yeah, you want to apps, watch TV on a console that can watch TV even though I have a cable box right next to me or I can yeah. watch it online. Yeah. I then mean, go with the Xbox, but I mean <laughs> I have a little joke. I mean this is gonna only the Apple Apple people know this, but I'm, we're gonna get somebody disliked for this one. But why why did Bill Gates name Microsoft Microsoft? Why? Because he was just he was describing his dick. <laughs> but I'm I mean so- <laughs> you always get these little jokes like uh this is the Xbox um oh yeah, my, my Microsoft announced the brand new Xbox uh, 920p or etc and you know the console is is such a flop from the 360 it's a step backwards for some people yeah, I guess it is a step backwards but for Sony it's it's a huge step forward and I can't wait to see what they have out to do so um, Stephen, here's an interesting question. What is something that a person does that makes you instantly hate them? <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, boy. Or if there's more than just one thing, then, you know. Okay. I One thing I hate when it really makes me piss off at people is when Okay, and this is going to sound like I'm a complete <laughs> asshole, but I hate when people try to tell me how to do math and try to add things up, and this just <laughs> happened today, right? And I kick their ass every time, uh-huh. okay? I was calling – I don't know if you have this in England. It's called Domino's Pizza. Yeah, we do. Oh, you have those? Sweet. Yeah. Okay, cool. So now you know where I'm coming from. So I call. So now they're having a deal here in America. All their pizzas are fifty percent off. I'm nice. If you order online, well, my grandmother didn't want didn't want to believe me, and you know she just called up the store and she's like, she's like, yeah, if we get this, this, and this, you know, we had three pizzas we were gonna yeah. order, and we did order those pizzas. <laughs> what do you like, get? What are you getting? Your pizzas. No, uh, well, she only gets. I got her uh, pepperoni, so pepperoni pan pizza. Then I got the folk, you know, the old man and the old woman, uh, uh, Phil, Philadelphia cheesesteak pizza, which uh-huh. you know only us in the United States know about that. But uh, and then I got myself what's called a pizza feast, you know, uh-huh. you know, a lot of meat. <clears throat> yeah, um, what I tend to do. Is I go for like a Texas um, pizza where it has like oh boy. ham, bacon. It's in barbecue like a barbecue sauce. base. Yeah, yeah, you have. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. But the funny part about it was okay. Now we usually if this wasn't half off, we'd spend fifty dollars. But we were only going to spend twenty three forty. I suppose wow. everything was. That's no. kind of dear over there because over here we have a um, we have like a thing called Just Eat. Uh, Just Eat is a takeaway service online, but you put your postcode in and various takeaways will come on and they have like certain deals. Now, all our pizza places over here will have a thing where if you buy one pizza, you will get one free. Now, it will, it will be the same pizza, the same size, so you can have either 8, 10, 12, 14, whatever you want, and then you will get another pizza free. It will be the same pizza, but you get two pizzas. Um, and that... Uh, will normally cost under £15. Hmm. 
Um, so, you know. Uh, Rats, lucky then. Well, yeah, I'd hate to spend $50 on a takeaway service. I mean, not That's, over here. Yeah, if we, crazy. if me and my family, we ordered like a Chinese for four of us, that only comes to £20 between four of us. So mm. to spend fifty dollars or fifty quid, that's insane. But all right, well, yeah. So the you know we called up there and we were trying to get an estimate to see if my you know because that had the, I ordered off of the Domino's app on the yeah. iPhone, which that uh-huh. does it for me. It does tax delivery charge yeah. and all that good shit. So I ain't got to do it, even though I can do it. Because mm-hmm. we have sales ta- we have sales tax here in Pennsylvania. It's <laughs> <laughs> through the fucking roof. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, Tom Corbin. You fucking oh. Republican. Okay. <laughs> so, so you know the total comes out to you know twenty three forty on my end. Well, this chick tries to tell my grandma that it's gonna be twenty forty. Uh huh. And I already said, nope, you're dumb. <laughs> you don't even have it right, right? So I told Graham, I'm like. I'm like, Graham, okay, I'm going to add all these pizzas up here at half price, and I'm going to do this for you. I'm going to prove this chick was raw. <laughs> so literally, I added everything up on like a little – on a packing slip. That's all I had for paper. Uh-huh. You know, then it came out to 20 – oh, I, no, the thing was 2208. That's what she said. That's what – or it was 20 – what was it? 20 – shit, what was it? Uh, I forget what it is. But – uh, I had the delivery charge, which was twenty two oh eight. I'm like, uh-huh. which was kind of close to where she told us. I'm like, well, she didn't have sales tax. And I'm like, <clears throat> how did this chick not add sales tax? You know, here in Pennsylvania, you know, when you do sales tax, you take the total of something, then you multiply it by point zero six. Yeah. For six percent, and I'm giving everybody a math lesson here, <laughs> and then you uh, you take that and you add it to uh-huh. the total, and it came out to twenty three forty. <laughs> but yeah, you gotta love it. So what else do you instantly hate a person like when they do something wrong? I cannot stand when a person. I can't stand when people try to argue with me. And we always come, and we come to the same. We argue about the same point. Yeah, but they just have like a different opinion, or they want to no, go more in depth on your point. No, it's not that. It's like we ha- we think the same thing. Okay, we think that we think about the same thing. Actually, uh-huh. Where was I going with that? I was going somewhere with that, but bleh. it's like you know we think about you know we agree on the same thing, and then they want you know. They want to – and this happens. This happens to me in school like, all the time. You know, we're talking about something. We all agree with it. But then, they, you know, we get over it. But they want to drag it on and on and on yeah. and on and on. Like, okay, we're done. We're done. I, think mm-hmm. I, do, I do that sometimes. I do it. I'm not going to lie. I do do it. I piss myself off when I do it. <laughs> <laughs> but I, that happens to me in school all the freaking time. I'm like, shut the fuck up already. Right, we're done. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, one of the things that really pisses me off is when you're talking to someone and they they just think they're better than you and they they just think they're, oh, they 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 brag about more things to you like uh Smithy, I don't want to say I don't want to piss you off, but <laughs> I hear that a lot when I talk to British people. <laughs> uh, no, I mean <clears throat> look, when I say when I say to Americans, look, our tea is better than your tea. You have no game on me. But when you say, look, our food, our you know, um, places to go are better than you. You know, yeah, that that's kind of true. You know, America and England has its differences, but Americans will always love British, and British people will will always hate Americans. Pretty much, pretty much the standard and. Another thing is when people think uh, – like when they underestimate you. Do you ever get that thing where people think they're better than you and then you end up doing something better than them? All the time. 
Yeah, like when people just underestimate you and, and everything like that, that, that. That's a pretty pissed off thing. So. Shit, that happened to me in school a couple times this year. Somebody told me I couldn't do this, this, and this, and I did it. Yeah, it happened um, not with me, but a famous uh, guy who does cycling. Um, he's a Ooh. official um, cyclist, uh, Bradley Wiggins. You probably heard of him, right? Ah, uh, yeah, I have heard of Bradley Wiggins. Yes. And his teacher, his PE teacher, said, "What do you want to do when you grow up?" He said be a professional cyclist and he laughed in his face he absolutely laughed in his face and he said there is 100 percent chance that you will never ever become a professional cyclist and he became one and he's won olympic gold he's won tour de france countless times and he went back to that teacher and he said to that teacher so um you know you said i'd never ever ever be a professional cyclist. Well, here I am. And the yeah, teacher just said, well, you've proven me wrong. I, I underestimated you. I under underestimated your skills and your abilities and everything like this and apologized to him. You know? as, they, as they say, haters are the motivators. But yeah, I mean, if, if someone tells you you can't do them, it should inspire you to say, it should inspire you to go and do what they say you can't do and prove them wrong. Because when they see that you can't do that, they will be jealous instantly because mm -hmm. they they got their wrong opinions about you. They got the wrong facts as you. Um, here's another question. What was the most stupidest thing you ever wanted as a child? <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, I can hear Dave laughing already. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, the stupidest thing that I wanted as a kid was, mm -hmm. do you know the TV, do you know the freaking thing, uh, the shit, the anime called Dragon Ball Z? Mm-hmm. I was so stupid as a fucking kid. I wanted powers from that shit. <laughs> <laughs> that was the <laughs> stupidest thing I've ever wanted in my life. <laughs> You see, the stupidest thing for me was um, what I would do as a kid is I would save all my pocket money and go spend it on, like, magic sets, um, like gross oh, magic Jesus sets and uh, scary <laughs> magic sets. And, you know, you would add, you could see these things advertised on TV and you'd be like, what? They're insane. Wow. I want to do this. <laughs> you know, I want to do that to people. And I would spend, 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 spend money on them. And it didn't get you jack shit, did it? And it didn't work. All, it didn't work, and the sets turned out to be shit. And I was like, oh, great. Well, you know. Cool. <laughs> that's pointless. But, you know, when you're a kid, everything you see on the TV kind of looks cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you can that's go. That's the purpose, though. And you say to mummy and daddy, Mom, I want this. Dad, I want this. You can have it for Christmas. Fuck off. <laughs> Christmas is like too. nine months ago. Oh, well, nine months later. I want it now. Mm -hmm. You hate me if you don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh huh. That is it. Beer time. <laughs> Beer. God damn, how many things have you opened already? Um, Including tonight. This is my seventh. This is my Jesus. fourth on the podcast. God. Damn, man. What kind, how much alcohol content in that thing? 1%? Uh, no, I will find out in just a sec. Here we go. He's going to find out now, people. The expert. 4.8% um, alcohol per bottle. Oh, shit. Yeah, you'll be fine then. Yep. <clears throat> Drink some Bailey's Irish cream. Oh, no. Bailey's is vile, man. Yeah, but you couldn't drink couldn't couldn't drink a whole bottle of that without getting hammered. No, but what I have done is uh, me and my friends, go. when we uh, used to get drunk for park, we used to buy uh, a bottle of vodka, um, like a Smirnoff vodka, the pure yeah. Russian shit. Mm. And we used to play a game called Barcode, and pretty uh, much what you do. I know this. Go ahead. Is uh, you look at the numbers on the barcode, depending on how many people there are with you. You know, normally there'd be quite a few. Um, mm -hmm. You would 
how, whatever the number was on the barcode, you would spin a spin around that amount of times without the vodka moving from your mouth. Um, and I mainly always used to go first because always on vodka um, with the barcode, it was always number nine. So I used to spin around nine times with vodka, uh, two litre bottle of vodka or a litre um, of vodka. And we used to do this like multiple times a night. Oh, my God. Um, and, you know, it was just amazing. Like we would um, we would buy um, probably um, a cr- two crates of beer, sometimes a crate, and just, you know, everyone would have spares of crates. So you get like a 20 in a crate, you know, whatever it is, and, you know, just drink away and just, you know, have a laugh. And, you know, it would take me, um, it would take me quite a while to, to get pissed off uh, Budweiser, to be honest. <laughs> but Budweiser is nice. Man. Have you ever tried Budweiser? I have not, actually. You should try it, man. It is it is the oh, shit the, German yeah, drink. Where am I get where am I getting that out of my ass? Well, you can drink at home, right? Yeah, like my parents are gonna buy me alcohol. This ain't Britain. This ain't Britain, mate. <laughs> Most parents don't buy alcohol for their kids. Oh wow! Like I used to, um, I just used to ask for money. Uh, I didn't say I was gonna spend it on something. I was just just say, can I have the uh, enough? I could probably 15 get alcohol pound or whatever. I could probably um, get alcohol if I wanted to, though. I, I could. Yeah, and then I, I'd go get uh, my older friend to just go in the shop, or some parents would buy it for you. You know, my parents never knew that I underage drank, um, because I'd always sneak back in. Like uh, as a child, I was kind of like a free child. Like I, uh, I never had a bedtime when I went out. I could, I could come in whenever I want. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like I was coming in at like half six in the morning when Jesus I was getting drunk Christ. and just going to sleep, you know, half six, half seven, half five, um, you know, pretty much. And now that I'm obviously older and I'm, you know, legally allowed to drink, I could just go out, come back in the next day or come back in early hours of the morning and just be fine, you know, I don't have to explain mm-hmm. anything to my parents or, you know, text them saying that like, I'll be in at this time or. You know, so, you know, do what you want. You know, if you are going to underage drink, drink sensibly. Um, you know, don't clut yourself out. You know, of course, when you're a new drinker, you're going to get pissed slightly easy. But that's the whole point, you know. You you uh-huh. do eventually strengthen when you get used to drinking it. So it's, it's fun. It's, it's good. And I'm sure when Steven's 21, he'll probably go out and celebrate downtown. Yeah, most likely. Mm-hmm. Um, what was your worst experience you've had at a shopping store? It does say grocery store, but you know, oh. for us, we don't call it. <laughs> we don't call it uh, a grocery store over here. But I, I guess I'm hitting a home run with these questions at the moment. Oh, you are hitting them perfectly. Uh huh. This okay. happened. This happened about a couple of weeks ago. No, about a month ago. Mm-hmm. We have these stores here on the East Coast in America. Most people on the West Coast, I don't think, have them, but they're called Bottom Dollar Foods. Uh-huh. Well, uh, you, know, it, you know, it's a normal store. So, you know, we go there. You know, you know I'm with my mother because we're getting some stuff for the house. You know, we're checked out. You know, we're getting our stuff bagged up. You know, at that store, you have to do it on your own. Hmm. Cheap bastards. But, <laughs> uh, you know, you know, we're just sitting there, and all of a sudden, we hear a boom. You know, we hear a box drop. We look over. Big, big, giant black guy and this old guy are just fucking in their faces, and these sons of bitches are about ready to go. Hmm. <laughs> Well, we caught them on the good. We caught them on a really nice day, because next thing you know, those two were on the floor, and they were out. <laughs> and all I can say is, I've never seen two dumb sons of bitches in my life. <laughs> And the 
funniest part about it was uh, <laughs> these dumb sons of bitches were fighting over, I don't even know what they were fighting over. I literally don't know what they were fighting over. All of a sudden, you know, one's point finger at the other. Oh, oh, he started. No motherfucker cracking you started, nigga, bitch. <laughs> you know, and it was the funniest, most awkward, but it was so damn funny, though. <laughs> uh, the worst experience that I've had at a grocery store, I'm, I really can't think of one. Um, but, uh... I have been kicked out of a grocery store. Like, um. How in the fuck do you pull that one off? Well, uh, me and my friend, we were, uh, we were in there and, you know, we were just casually walking around, um, oh, here we the go. store. Uh, this is kind of like a, a big store. Um, you know, it's got like, um, 32. 40 odd rows of like food you can buy, etc. Ex, you know, essentials uh-huh. and whatnot. So it's kind of a big sc- store, you know, security is pretty high, etc. Security cameras are pretty rare, it's got a range of tills, etc. Um, <clears throat> me and him, we, we were chilling in there, and we decided to play a game called Bogies. Bogies? Yeah, now the idea of Bogies is it came off uh, a TV show, which I never used to watch. But I knew the game Bogies had come off there, and pretty much the idea of Bogies is that one person starts it off, and you say Bogies, the next person to go has to say it louder than you. Oh, I see where this is going. <laughs> so we started playing Bogies, and it got to the point where we were shouting it, going, Bogies, like that, like that. And of course, all the cameras around the shops obviously oh, diverted. Oh yeah, They're staring uh, at your ass. Stuff. Oh yeah, we, we yeah we we got caught pretty easily, and we were escorted off the premises and banned from the grocery store. <laughs> so, oh god. Yeah, no, um, it, it it's fine. You know, bogies is fun. The things you do as a child, eh? Uh, yeah, the funniest things. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I've never been kicked out of a uh, grocery store before. Not yet, at least. <laughs> Not yet, at least. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> Intends to. Well, there's there's been a couple of moments in grocery stores where, hey, well, let's just say I could have. Uh, <laughs> well, I, I could have raised a, a ruckus, but I didn't. Oh, yeah, and one of the things about grocery stores is you ever get one of those grocery stores where you've brought something and it doesn't work or it doesn't fit as nicely as you want? You take it back, you take it back, and their customer services are just totally arseholes about it. Oh, Oh, you brought it back within the 40-day five requirement. Oh, we can't take this back. Yeah, we can't. Um, Oh, oh, (laughs) Jesus Christ. Get a fucking life. Give me my money. has? Boy, has that happened to me many times. <laughs> and every time um, it's ended badly. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, during this uh, podcast, well, not this particular podcast, but during the other five, um, we've talked about your Astros. Have you had an update with your Astros? Do they work now? Nope. What's... Nope? Nope. I'm done with Astro. They can kiss my ass. So you got Astro A40s, right? Yes. Um, and just to give new viewers and ideas, because I've had a lot of new subscribers and people may watch this and whatnot. And uh, Stephen got a pair of Astros, uh, was it about a year ago? About two years ago. About two years ago. Um, and they worked fine on Xbox. Yeah, they worked perfectly on Xbox. And he brought them over to his PlayStation 3. And they didn't work, so he sent them back. Um, well, wait, did they work at first on the PS3, or did they no, never work? they never did. So they they never worked on his PlayStation. They worked fine on PC and Xbox and whatnot. Um, so he, he contacted Astro. Uh, they sent him, like, new cables out for his PS3, for his Astros. Didn't work. Uh, that didn't work either. And then did you send them back after that, or did they send more stuff out? Or did they send a they... new pair out after they pretty much told me to send the the you know they pretty much told me to send the mix amp. I said that they sent me a new one. It still didn't work. Hmm. So then 
I tried. So then they told me to send the whole thing back. I did that. They sent it back to me. So there was nothing wrong with it. Yeah. And I sent it back again. They sent it back. Nothing wrong with it. And they wouldn't mm-hmm. replace the headset. They literally just kept telling me, you know, they kept sending the headset back, but not the freaking, you know, they kept sending everything else back, but not the fucking headset. And I keep telling them, it's the freaking headsets, dipshit. Yeah. Then they were trying to tell me, oh, you should try this on another person's PS3. You should try this on another person's PS3. <laughs> it should work. And I, I lied to them. I'm like, yeah, I just tried it on a PS4. It works <laughs> fine for me. It's fine on there. Oh, well. Okay, we'll just send it back. We'll send you a new one. <laughs> and after the last time I got it back, I just told them, you know what? Astro can kiss my ass. <laughs> Are you going to try it on your PS4 when you get it? No. I'm using my Sony headset because I know it works on there. Well, the thing is, the PS4 ships with its own headset, but I would advise you, um, when you get the PS4, do not use the Sony standard headset. They they are terrible. They are terrible headphones. That they are absolutely god terrible. But um, oh, I figured that. But I'm just using the Sony headset that I have now that I use. <laughs> yeah. I use um, the good thing is though with the PS4 is that Turtle Beach have got a standard line shop that is demoted to PS4 and PC only headsets. Um, and they're bringing like several uh, Turtle Beach headsets out for PS4. Oh, another thing is I forgot to mention, I absolutely went off on them on Twitter about their freaking. You know, I was on there. I will never buy another goddamn product <laughs> Astro again. Well, let's just say they blocked me. <laughs> Didn't they? <laughs> yeah, they blocked me. Wow. Jesus. You know, I'm surprised Activision support hasn't done that to me because I've complained so many times about COD not being there, but I've also helped them a lot. Like, I I showed them gameplay that, you know, Black Ops 2 has been hacked. I told them about Ghost being hacked. I showed them gameplay for that. Oh, yeah, you showed them everything. You know, I... I I tell them things, you know, I told them about the care package glitch in, um, on Black Ops 2 that was happening on um, one of the maps, um, DLC maps, Hydro, I think it was, um, where the care package would land on top of the roof, um, like on top of the whole map, but wouldn't come down. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I managed to get footage of that. You know, I tell them pretty much anything that's wrong with the game, so... It's a love-hate relationship, I guess. But uh, yeah. let's hit another question. Uh, oh, this would be good for you because you're US-based, but if you had to get rid of a state in the US, which one would it be and why? New Mexico. Why? We don't need that goddamn state. Why? Because we just don't. Well, tell a British person why you don't need that state in US. Now, I don't mind. Now, here's the thing, okay? I've, uh, I'm probably going to piss off. I'm going to piss off the demographic. I'm starting to piss off the demographics already. But I do not like Mexicans. Mm-hmm. Okay? I'm not very fond towards them. Uh-huh. First of all, because they come in this country, 95% of them come in this country illegally. Which is a giant problem. You know, then they bring their Mexican diseases over here and shit, and we all get it. <laughs> and New Mexico, I, th- I don't know how many Mexicans are in New Mexico or not. I don't know, but it has Mexico in the name, so let's get rid of it. Or just change the name, that too. Uh-huh. Change it into a name that's worthy. The Stephen State? No, just name it after Benjamin Franklin or some shit. (laughs) Now, I'm not really a a U.S. guy. I live in the U.K., so I guess I'll change the question for me. Um, I'll change it to, you know, um, what is a county you would get rid of in the U.K.? Now, the U.K. is... um, 
is kind of balanced with this kind of thing, but I mean, to me, it, it depends where you go with this question because you, you kind of think of it, you know, you kind of think the first thing that pops into your mind is what states help me out? You know, what states improve a better me? You know, where do I want to go? Where do I want to work? Where do I want to visit? You know, what's my favorite state? What state do I hate? What county do I hate, etc.? You know, that kind of pops into your mind, doesn't it? Um, yeah. So, you know, you have to kind of pick on a state that you hate or a county that you hate. And I, I guess, to me, it would be Hull or something. Now, Hull's a city. It was, uh, I think, in the last three years or in the last couple of years, it's been voted the worst city in England to live in because of the violent crime rate over there. And it's just a horrible place to live. Not because there's just crime rate. There's just, it's a, just a dull area. I guess I would get rid of that. You know, it's not really great, um, to be perfectly honest. It's it's kind of a shithole. So I, I guess I would get uh-huh. rid of that. But, I mean... Yeah. <clears throat> okay, here's another question that's just come off the top of that. If you could invade one country... Now, this is just you, yourself, and you were in charge of, like, I don't know, let's say... You're you're in charge of the nation. You're in charge of your own army, etc. If you could invade one country or one state, whatever it was, what would it be? Oh, damn! In the world, you can invade Ooh. anything. There's there's no boundaries. There's no if you North invade this country, this country will come after you. There's none of that. North Korea. Invade. North Korea. Why? North Korea. First of all, we have a stupid chink in there. That's the first part. Uh-huh. I. I pissed off that demographic, but I'm good at doing that. Right, North Korea don't even have YouTube, so it's fine. Eh, they can kiss my ass if they see this anyway. <laughs> but I'm just saying, okay, North uh-huh. Korea, okay, you have a stupid chink in there that thinks he's going to have global domination, which he ain't going to have shit. <laughs> and another thing is, the funniest part, okay, the funniest part about this, okay, as soon as I would take it over, I would kill Kim. I don't know what the hell Kim his name is. Or Kim Jong, whatever his name. Kim Jong Un or some yeah. girl. His fucking girl name, whatever the fuck it's called. I could care less. But uh, you know, first of all, if we gotta have a new name, it's gonna be called New America. Uh huh. We have New England. We have New Hampshire. We have New Mexico. New America. I mean, mm-hmm. we're right above we're right above North South Korea, which you know they're allied with us. Mm-hmm. But well, we could you know we could make North Korea or you know New New America and South Korea into one giant New America. Except we would have states over there too. Oh yeah. God, that's more. Oh God, that's more stars on a flag we don't need. <clears throat> well, it's beer time. Uh, have a beer. Number five. Uh huh. My last one until I probably go downstairs and get some more. Uh, good job, mate. Good job. You cracked, <laughs> you cracked the beer barrier. Yep. <clears throat> but uh, you want to carry on with your? Or were you done? That's right. I'm done. Uh, you know, I, I kind of want to. Um, if I could invade any country, it would have to be. Um. Hmm. It would have to be somewhere like Spain or Italy or a little island. You know, some of the some of the nicest islands around the world where, you know, have, like, nice houses where, like, all the rich people just rent out, like, um, vacancies out there and claim their money because they have, like, all swimming pools. They've got the views and everything like that. You know, you just want to invade somewhere like Spain or, or, or an island in Spain or something like that because... If you're going to invade something and you can have the people, um, you know, sort of like work for you or, um, you know, income, money, etc. You know, you want to go to a country that's hot in population and where tourist attracts, etc. Spain's yeah. one of them. Uh, I guess if you were going based on population, you'd go to China or Japan. China or Japan. <laughs> uh, Chong, make my goddamn Chinese food in my gut. Oh wait, wait, just... wait. Let, let me let me just say your line. Now we've offended that population. 
Yeah, we've offended that. <laughs> yeah, we've offended that one. Democrat. Um, um, but you know, you want to invade somewhere where it's hot, it's fun, it's you know, where you where you can have the right to you know pretty much take over fully, where no one's going to stand in your way. Um, the question was, you know, if you can invade any country or whatever state, whatever you want. You know, no one's going to stand in your way, but I mean, you want to invade somewhere where the population behind you would be sensible enough to listen to you. And I mm-hmm. guess anywhere in Spain for me would be there. Um, but what changes would you make if you if you invaded North Korea? What changes would you make to that? Mm. Well, like, I mean, I get- obviously they would, you know, they would follow the U.S. Constitution. Yeah, but that's about it. Mm, I guess for me, it would just be for everyone to pretty much have fun, enjoy themselves. Um, of course, Spain's obviously a a hot drinking country, population kind of thing. You know, a lot of people go to Spain to go drink on holiday or yeah. go to the sunshine or go visit the um, football, famous football teams over there, mm-hmm. etc. Just have a good time, you know. I would scrap... Um, I don't know if you know this as an American, but I do because you sometimes see it on Facebook. They do like uh, bull races. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the bull races, yeah. And they say that's inhumane. And Okay, here we go. I'm going to cite what one of the people say. It's inhumane. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty much how they say it. Yeah, yeah, but over in Spain, they do um, like bull races. And pretty much what they are is they yeah, will either have. Well, yeah. there's two they kinds. Bunch of people. Oh, there's okay. two kinds. Basically, there's one. I don't know if they do this in Spain or they used to at least. Um, pretty much, they will have a bull in an arena who hasn't ate for weeks. Uh, um, yeah. And they will chuck a human who's obviously val- volunteered himself, and if he wins, if he uh, kills the bull, bearing in mind he has like no equipment, he can't just walk in there with a shotgun or something like that. Um, he has to beat him by hand um, or a stick or something like that off the ground. Mm-hmm. Um, and he will, if he wins, he obviously gets money that people have betted. Um, yeah. But, you know, so most of the time the bull wins. And they also have like a, a carnival race kind of thing, which is where um, they have like, I think it's like a a certain amount of bulls, so say like nine or ten bulls. They release them. The whole crowd of people have to run to the finish line. And, you know, just last week, someone actually died from Well, actually not someone. A few people actually died from that. So I, I, w- that. I would sh- scrap all that because, like, I'm not like a animal cruelty guy. You know, I'm, I'm totally against animal cruelty because, like, how can you heat? How can you hurt something that's not really kind of like, you know, doesn't really have any feelings, doesn't really have any like emotion? You know, like people say pets have emotion, but they can't express emotion, can they really? They can't really uh, say, yeah, you know, they can pets. moan and tear and whatnot, but yeah, that, they can't, yeah. they can't really they say. They can't verbally express to you, I'm yeah. sad, mm. or I need this, I want that. Yeah. So I would scrap all that, um, but, you know, Spain would be somewhere where I want to invade just because, you know, cheap booze, sunshine, loads of fit girls. Let's Bitches. go. Let's go. Boom, boom. Um, also, um, this has just come off the top of my head that I just remembered. Sony actually, um, a guy, Sony president, I can't remember what president he is, but I know he's a president of Sony, whether he's like fifth president or sixth or whatever, he said in an interview that Sony may bring back Crash Bandicoot for the PS4. I can see them doing that. Yeah. Now, you've got to bring a full game out, surely. It can't just be some crappy rental service on PlayStation now. You've got to... If you're going to bring Crash Bandicoot back... Oh, he also said Spyro as well. Um, Spyro. Crash Bandicoot and Spyro, they were the beauties of PS1. PS1 was so good. Oh, yeah. The PS1 was... uh, You know, I can't say... Despise Modern Warfare 2. If if I hadn't played Modern Warfare 2, and I'd just 
continued a PS1 or PS2 player. Spyro, Crash Bandicoot, The Simpsons Hit and Run. They were it. Yeah. They were it. Yeah. There was a new game out on PS1 every week. Now, if they bring Crash Bandicoot back, or they bring back like a a Crash Bandicoot Adventures or something with all like the Crash Bandicoot stuff in, I'll totally buy that. I don't even care how much it is. I will yeah. buy it. I Crash... remember what, what game I used to play back on the PS2. You used to play Jack and Dexter. I don't know if you remember that one. Yeah. I love Jack and Dexter. They can never beat it, though. I got stuck on one level, mm. and I never beat it, but yeah. I always kept replaying it since. That's the thing. I used to play like all the older um, Harry Potter games and whatnot. Like, it doesn't matter with a PS1 or PS2. There was always like a game that came out every week. Mm-hmm. Whereas now with the PS4, it seems as if like maybe three to four games come out every month. And I understand that with the PS3. But then again, if you look at the... Um, well, with the PS4, you know, a game comes out every one to three weeks, you know, every month yeah. you get, I don't know, depending on like indie games, you know, do, do you really count indie games as like a triple A title? I don't. Do you? Uh, sometimes, but it's rare. Mm, it has to be like a really, really good um, indie game, but... I mean, like The Walking Dead, that's a game that, was that considered an indie game or... Um, I can't remember. I kind of guess it would be, because if you think about it, it wasn't a game that was based on someone's idea. It was based off an idea of a TV show. And that, yep. to me, isn't really a, a hit and a home run with, like... Because obviously when you design a game, you think of a game story, you think of a set, you think of a scene, you think of lines and everything like that. And... I'm pretty. I've never played The Walking Dead. You know, whatever season one, season two, whatever. Oh my god! You never played The Walking Dead season one? No, I, I've I've never played it because I've ne- I've never liked the fact that you have to buy the episodes. I should go over there and bitch slap your ass. <laughs> that is such a good game. That was a good franchise. Season one, at least. I never played season two, but season one, I'm not. It's just amazing. Dude, season two, you're missing out. I should bitch slap you back, man. Season two is all about the shit, man. Oh my god, you're not playing <laughs> season one, but you're playing season two. What's this about? Dude, I've you never played. To... I've never played the game. I was just stating a fact. You know, season two. Then, two's I, can, all then about. I can still bitch slap you. Then <laughs> I can bitch slap you back. No, I can bitch slap you because you never <laughs> played it. Look, I have seven bottles of Budweiser on the floor. Right now, so yeah, if you really want to bitch slap me, I will Budweiser slap you. Okay. <laughs> Your choice. Uh, I like it. I like it, mate. <laughs> I like it. You fucking love it, mate. I love it. You love it. <clears throat> Would you like some crumpets? Yeah, what is there about tea and crumpets over there? Is that just a stereotype or? That's a. Uh, you see, I I think they go off. Um, Tea and crumpets because they they were obviously invented by British people, but they they relate tea and crumpets to like a a posh thing. Americans don't understand that they think the the Queen eats um, well drinks and eats tea and crumpets every week. Yeah, um, but she she probably doesn't. You know, I, I don't know if you really want to find out. Go follow the Queen's Twitter page or uh, add her on Facebook. <laughs> you know, yeah. you can really find out what she eats and whatnot. But, you know, it, it's she kind eats. of like a a posh thing because obviously Americans always associate British people with the, with the old... And... Well, no, well, with the old posh English accent, like, oh, hello, I'm oh, British. Tip-top tip, tilly You know, a- every... Stop. Every American you ever meet, that will be that they will always try and do a British accent by putting trying to put a posh British accent on again. Oh, hello, where are your tea and crumpets? Yeah, like you know, everyone associates that with that, and everyone thinks that everyone in every American thinks that every British person loves tea and crumpets, but no, not everyone loves. I mean, crumpets are good, tea's very good. You know, but not everyone likes it. It's not everyone's cup of tea, I, I guess. Oh boy, but I'm not I, using more friggin' <laughs> memos. <laughs> yeah, memos. <laughs> but um, you know, 
it's kind of like the thing with like British people. Like every British person, as soon as they meet American, they just picture whether it be on like PSN or in real life, you know, or um, on Skype, whatever it is, when however you meet them, you just picture them being fat or you know them <laughs> them eating fat things sitting on their ass, you know, just being like, oh, I'm That's... gonna have a cookie. Give me a cookie. That's how, yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of bad on both sides, really. There's something that I will give British people is they're fracking McDonald's. They're fracking, fracking McDonald's. What about I'm McDonald's? Je- I'm jealous of your fracking McDonald's over there. You're jealous? I'm jealous of your fracking McDonald's. Why? Because you, you sons of bitches have things that we don't. Yeah, but you have things that we don't. Okay. Wait a minute. What things? Wait. What things do we have here that that we have here that you don't? I don't know. I've never been to. You tell me some of the things, and I'll tell you if you, we we have them here. Or certainly, we don't I'll tell, have. I'll tell them if you. I'll tell you if you we don't have them by the McDonald's near me, which is the McDonald's near me is probably like five minutes away from me. So you know, but, but you tell me some of the things. Um. And I'll, I'll try and remember because I don't really go to McDonald's that often. I haven't been no. to McDonald's in... It's been a while. It's been about nine months, I'd say, since I went to McDonald's. But <clears throat> you tell me some of the things that you have, and I'll tell you if we have. All right. Um, just looking on their website right now because I actually don't know. It's yeah. been a while since I see what's on their menus. Yeah. Okay, now. Well, you probably have a lot of, like, the standards, like, Kentucky shit, don't you? Like, you'll, you'll probably have things that are named differently. Uh, I don't know. I'll have to see. Like, there's some bacon sandwich there that we don't have here. We have, uh, yeah, we, we have, um... Normally, you'll, if you have this bacon thing, you'll you'll have it, like, with egg or... If you don't it's, like eggs, you'll get like hash bacon. browns. It's just like yeah. a bacon roll, pretty much. Yeah, I'm looking at it. But there's also, actually, didn't know you had that. But there's also like a bacon thing. It's just bacon on a roll. Yeah. Which, but it's actually what you call bacon, we call Canadian bacon. Okay, well, what's it called in America? Like, if it's not Canadian bacon, like. Well, what they put on that is called Canadian bacon, but we call us Americans call it Canadian bacon. Yeah, but that isn't uh, in America. Isn't like bacon pref- bacon isn't uh, preferred over there? You like um, some uh, like turkey something? Turkey? What the fuck? Yeah, like, like, <clears throat> like I've watched TV shows and they like uh, they have this like turkey turkey bacon or something. Oh like yeah, that. yeah, we have yeah we have turkey bacon. Yeah, like what is that? Is it just turkey but in bacon slices, or is it is it a mixture much, yeah. of turkey and bacon? I'm not 100 percent sure, but I think it's uh, I turkey think it, and bacon slices. Yeah, turkey sliced into like bacon yeah. slices. I mean, the thing with McDonald's is, um, I I, I guess most of the things would be worldwide. Um, but they, they kind of go on, like, over here, recently, we just had a thing where, where, um... Well? <laughs> my voice keeps on going dry because I'm drinking, like, alcohol, and alcohol is one of those drinks where, like, if you drink some, you've got to have more. Yeah, it makes you <laughs> like, dry as hell. Yeah, it makes you all dry, so you drink more and more alcohol. Um, so I do apologise if, uh, if I've done that during the podcast, guys, if you are still here. Um, but I mean, you, you know, if you think with McDonald's worldwide, you know, you, you'd probably think, you know, most of the things would be common, but I guess it's kind oh. of just based on your country okay. or area. I'll tell you one thing that we have, that, or uh-huh. I'll tell you one thing that you have that we don't, the mm-hmm. double sausage egg and cheese McMuffin. Yes, we have that. <clears throat> That's one thing you have that we don't. Wow. You also have the... Yeah, the Memphis special. You, you see, based on based on the, my picturing of 
Americans being fat. I bet you have the the double sausage, double sausage, no, extra no. sausage muffin. No. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you also have the the, <coughs> the Memphis special. Uh huh. You know about that? No. Uh, that's something you guys had over there. And then uh, you we all you have the uh, what else? It's called Louisiana chicken. I don't even know what that is, but uh, we recently over there. We recently just had like a a British competition for McDonald's where people can design their own burgers, and it's it's a whole worldwide competition. And McDonald's will select I think it's four of these burgers that everyone submits, so you can have anything you want in these burgers and on the burgers. So, like, when I say in burgers, like, you know, like, when you bite into a burger, it has, like, built-in cheese. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can have anything in built into the burger, and then you can have anything built on top of the burger. So, like, some people go for, like, double cheese, so they'll have burger, uh, they'll have cheese inside the burger and bur- cheese on yeah. top of the burger. So, mm-hmm. so, you can have anything like that. You can have, like, any sort of, like, cob. Um, oh, God, yeah. I sounded very British there, didn't I? Cob. Cob. <laughs> Or button, as some I of the Americans may say. There's a lot of things uh, different McDonald's have around the world that the yeah. both of us don't have. In Australia, they have they I think they had a burger called the Sydney Special. Oh, only wow. the Austra- only the Australians would know about that, but yeah, it was a burger sometimes subscribed to a you know to an Australian uh, on YouTube. Yeah, or an Aussie as it is. Hmm. You know, you know I can see different things that they have there. Also, another thing that you have that we don't are the Expressos. What? I thought you would have the. I thought you would have invented those because. Nope, we don't have espressos. What? That's crazy because, like, I always assumed that, you know, British people seem to be uh, associated with, like, coffee and tea and everything like this, but I thought espressos um, and, like, Tazimos were sort of expressed with, you know, exposed to, like, an American thing. Nope, we don't have expressos at our McDonald's. Wow, that's that's amazing. Because I always thought um, like all that kind of stuff was associated to America. So now another thing that we on the East Coast of America don't have, but the West Coast does, it's called the McRib. We don't have those on the East Coast. Mm. It only comes around like once a year on the East Coast. Yeah, I mean over here, do you have? Um... Do you have like a, a 24 hours McDonald's? Uh, a lot of McDonald's are open 24 hours, yes. <clears throat> well, over here, we only have um, selected McDonald's that are open 24 hours. Like some will shut at, at uh, 11 or 10, whereas yeah, some awesome. will be over 24 hours. Like if the nearest one to me, I think, is like about an hour away. Yeah. Um, do you have like delivery McDonald's? Like do they deliver to you? Uh, not where I, not here in Pennsylvania, but I know, like, I think up in New York, which is the state above me, yeah. I think there is McDonald's that do deliver. See, over here, as long as, as far as I know, or as long as I know, um, none of McDonald's in the UK deliver. Huh. Now, you know, to me, that is silly, because... Delivering food is always an advance over picking up food. Like, you would increase your money, surely. Yeah. Like, the average person that rings the phone to say, oh, can I pick up or can I deliver food? I'd mm-hmm. say, like, 95% of them want to want their food delivered. I mean, there's. I'm looking at a friggin' uh, link right now. It's called BuzzFeed.com. There's a bunch of foods that aren't, aren't available at McDonald's in both of our countries. Like it's called the cheese fondue chicken. That's in Japan. Mm-hmm. The carbona car was it? The carbonara chicken, which is also in Japan. The yeah, I would imagine a lot of foods like um, a lot of foods in Japan wouldn't be suited to us. Cause yeah. Um, I've been, well, not watching a series, but sometimes if I, like, stay awake and I go down for breakfast, like, early in the morning, there's a show called, um, Nothing to Declare, 
And oh. basically, what it is is it's based in Australia and it's based on an airport, like certain airports. And you will see people trying to get into Australia, um, like from all around the world, and they will like do like drug tests and everything like this, and food and everything like this. And a oh. lot of uh, Japan Chinese foods seem to be um, like dried nuts, and they're all they're always like declared in Australia because people can. Uh, People are poisonous to dry nuts and everything like that. So you're oh. not allowed to take them. So, like, you know, I would imagine in McDonald's, I, I'm not sure what country developed McDonald's. Um, United States developed McDonald's. Okay, well, the United States developed McDonald's. Um, so, you know, you know, you would imagine that, you know, most of the things in McDonald's would surface from America, like be... Um, like I know a lot of your burger restaurants, um, whether it be, um, well, I don't know any burger ref- restaurants, but whether it be like USA chicken or something like that, a lot of them are referred over here, like recipes and whatnot, but mm-hmm. you would assume that everything worldwide McDonald's will be based on American and given to American McDonald's. I mean, I'm looking at different things here. I mean, wherever the McDonald's are in each country, you have different things. I mean, mm. it's like in Canada, they have – it's called the McLobster Roll. It's lobster salad on a bun, and they also have poutine in Canada. Have you ever had lobster? I have had lobster before, yes. I've never had it. Is it, is it nice? If it's cooked right, it's good. If it's not cooked right, it tastes like shit. <laughs> See, I've never had lobster because um, the best way to cook a lobster, you boil the water and you throw a live one in there. So you hear, over you hear that here, motherfucker scream. Over here, I don't actually think it, certainly over the supermarkets that live near me, you can't even buy like frozen lobster or real lobster. Oh, you don't. Yeah, you don't want frozen lobster. You want real lobster. They're the best. So you can only good. get it at restaurants. Um, and of course, with restaurants, they're always going to be live lobsters, so you have to go at a certain time, at a certain hour. Oh, the best part is when they throw that son of a bitch in and freaking throw that goddamn lobster in boiling hot water. Yeah, that motherfucker screams like somebody's getting <laughs> raped. <laughs> okay. It sounds very inhumane, but it's the only way you can cook <laughs> lobster. Oh, uh, yeah. I think All right. it sounds... <laughs> <laughs> It sounds more. It sounds more horrifying, but new series: Animal Noises with Steven. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, we're gonna implement that into the Minecraft, man. Animals, Animal Noise of the Week with Steven. <laughs> Coming soon in our Minecraft series from episode four, guys. From episode four and beyond, animal sounds with Steven. This sounds is it. Good. Okay. Um, here's another question. What's the most awkward scenario that you've ever accidentally walked in on? Oh. oh. Ooh, I got to think about this one. Uh, the most accidental situation I ever walked into. Oh, man. Which one was that? I can go with mine. I mean, I. Yeah, go ahead. I can think about okay. this one. Well, you know, the worst thing about being a child is that, you know, when when you're out, your parents kind of get down to business. Yeah. And you don't ever want to see that as a child because it scars you. Oh, my God. You were one of those people, aren't you? uh Uh-huh. It kind of scars you. Like, you're like, every time you get down to business with a girl, you will picture your parents at it. And uh, I remember coming home uh, one time. My sister was out for the night. She was stopping uh, a, a friend's sister. Of the yeah. Um, and, you know, I remember coming back home. Uh, not not kind of drunk, but, you know, kind of a little. So kind of tipsy, I guess. Well, if, well no, we say tipsy over here. It's, all, it's an American thing. Okay. Um, so it was kind of tipsy. I remember undoing the door, like putting my key in the door, unlocking it, and going upstairs. 
and I just hear these noises coming from the bedroom. And, oh, God. and then I remember her ender, ender, you know, like endering, you know, like, is that even a word, endering? Oh, they have the ender dragon, the ender man. Yeah, okay, so I remember it coming to, like, an end kind of thing, and they were both wanting to go in the bathroom, and I was there walking up the stairs, and then I hear, like, my mum say, like, oh, where's Aiden tonight? And I'm like, oh, God. Like, oh, God, you know, I can't go now, I I have to wait. (sighs) So I'm I'm sitting there on the stairs as quiet as possible, like, trying to not make a noise, because I don't want my parents to know that I know that they've got down to (gasps) it, They're, they're in the bathroom, you know, both go in. So I'm, I have to give it like 5 to 10 or 15 minutes so that they nod to sleep so I can sneak, you know, get back in my room sneakily uh-huh. or, or like dead sneaky. Uh, oh, God, it's just like, ugh. Like that memory is just stuck with me forever. Like I'm emotionally scarred from well, remembering you, well, my parents and see your mother's titties well, no. or your old well, man's no, swong. I know, but I mean like, just hearing it, like, ooh. Yeah. Like, it emotionally scars parents, and parents will always, as soon as both kids are out, or how many kids they have, their eyes will light up and be like, tonight's the night. Yeah, tonight's the night. Let's go. I'm going to tell you what's the most awkward one. It's something similar to this. And this was way before I met David. Way uh-huh. before I met David and them. Okay. Mm-hmm. This son of a bitch... Was, you know, I used to go to his house. And I'm not friends with him anymore. And I went, you know, to his house. And all of a sudden, you know, I've spent the night there. I hear, you know, I hear, boom, 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 boom. And it's loud. I'm like, the fuck is that? <laughs> right? I'm like, I fucking, you know, and I, oh, what was I doing that night? No. Well, yeah, this was, you can tell this was a while ago, because I can't remember it. I was taking a shit in his bathroom, <laughs> and, you know, I had to sleep in the same room. I think I was out, in the, it was in the bed for like 20 minutes, I think I had like diarrhea or some shit. I was in there a long time, and I go in there, oh, you know, I'm not really paying attention, I'm acting like I'm tired. All I know is, I see his, all I know is it's, He's bringing sheets off. And he's stroking that son of a bitch. Oh god! <laughs> and you all having your parents scar you for life? <laughs> no. Try to walk in on your on your mate while he's jerking off. Oh dear. Um. You know what I did? What? I I pretty it's like he saw me too. He saw me walk in. I'm just like. I didn't even look down. I just looked straight. I looked at him. I turned around. I shut the door. I went downstairs. I called my folks. Get me out of here. <laughs> Get me out of here. I'm going to be molested. Oh, God. <clears throat> it's going to be... That would be intense. I, I've had... Um, I've had... I don't know whether it's worse or not, but I guess um, I was asleep one time, uh, well, one time at, at my friend's house, yeah. and um, oh but it's, him and his girlfriend were getting on it down oh, the, on their beds, and they ended up doing it next to me whilst I was asleep. <laughs> I bet you but, the best thing to wake up to. <laughs> well, you know, it, it is what it is. But, hey, get your dick out of a pussy. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so, uh, here's, here's another fun question compared to the last couple of questions we've had. What did oh you want God, to be? Oh my God, not the be? fire alarm, damn it. <laughs> oh wow, what's that? That is my fire alarm. That is the firehouse that is down the street. And that's the siren going off. Oh wow. It's that loud. Wow. So, let's wait uh, for this to let's wait for this to go because this is gonna really interrupt the audio. Uh huh. This is only gonna be like probably another ten seconds, I think. Okay. I don't think it's coming through, to be honest. What? I have the um, 
like it has the two mics and it has like the volume coming through. And whilst that alarm went off, I, I saw nothing coming through. All right, well, that's a good thing. All right, let's keep going then. But um, what did you want to be when you grew up, but you never did? Like, what what did you want to be? Like, um, I don't know, like a football star, NBA star, policeman, whatever. Like, what's, NASCAR driver. What from the moment like you were five? Yeah, pretty much. So is like NASCAR like a a big thing over there? Not really. So is it on like a TV though? Yeah. I mean, NASCAR pretty much considered the redneck sport in America. Mm. If some people even call it a sport. I mean, it's racing, but... I mean, it's the same over here. Like, we have, um, like, Formula One over here. Formula One's kind of big. Kind of a Formula big One. For, yeah, Formula One, IndyCar. Yeah, IndyCar and all uh-huh. that. We have that over here. Yeah, um, we have it here too. I guess certain people kind of watch it. I, I'm not one of those certain people that watches it because I actually don't like any car. Yeah, I, I kind of with Formula One, I would watch it, but I can't be bothered to sit there for sixty odd laps. Sixty shit. Yeah, In like, America. But shit. over here, uh, Formula One. They do, they go to like different tracks of around the oh, world, so it's like a Grand Prix. Road, well, you go to road courses in NASCAR. We do mostly ovals. Uh, but what we do over here is well, not over here, but what the sport does over here is pretty much um, there are. I think uh, I, I may be wrong with this. There may be more. There may be not. But to me, I think roughly there's. Over 30 drivers from like different countries, yeah. and you go to like your Spain, your Argentina, your Brazil, your England, your Italy. You have one racetrack in each country, and you have to do I think it's like 62 laps per. Depending uh, how long the track is, yeah. Well, no, it doesn't matter how long the track it track is. It's always like uh, 60 odd laps. Hmm. So like, I can personally sit there and watch cars go around, you know, like cars go around 60 times. I mean, NASCAR, I mean, it all depends on the track, but. Mm. But, no. I mean, for me, I always wanted to be a football star, and I did play football. Um, I won quite a few trophies and medals and whatnot. Um, Which football? When, your football or my football? Like my football, like soccer to you. Football. So I wanted yeah. to be like a soccer star. I used to play a little football. Um, I always used to be playing football. Um, I didn't go to like a professional level. Um, my dad had a professional um, level. My dad, my granddad, my dad's dad, he was a professional. He got offered a professional contract but turned it down. Actually, my old man actually could have went, probably could have went further if he didn't mm-hmm. fuck himself up, but... Story for another day. Um, I I won uh, a lot of medals, a lot of trophies, and whatnot. Um, and I broke my wrist uh, when I was. You did a doozy. <laughs> yeah, I broke my wrist when I was about eleven or twelve, which oh, kind of which kind of dented me. Like you know, like when you break a bone or do something really young. And it kind of scares you, like, oh, shit, you don't want to do that again, because that really hurt. No, because I've never broken anything. Have you yeah. not? I broke my wrist, right? Um, I Have I ever told you the story about how I broke my wrist? Nope. Right, so um, I'm in London, and we're going to this, like, concert thing, this, like, music concert thing my dad's paid money for. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's about, like, an hour or so before the show. Um, we mm-hmm. go to, like, a restaurant because... Um, when you go to like a concert thing, all yeah. the food is like three times as dear. Uh huh. So we went to like a restaurant and um, I uh, I chose to eat a pizza. Pizza. So, so I chose to have like a pepperoni pizza and it, and it said you pe- lucky with, son of a bitch. It cho- it said on the menu um, with green pe- green and red peppers. So I just assumed that would like normal green red peppers. Yeah. Because that's what's normally on, like, a standard, like, deep pan pizza. Yeah, on a normal pizza, yeah. Yeah, Um. so I was like, yeah, I'll go with that. But it actually didn't say. 
And when I got my pizza, it came with like some other different peppers that were really hot. And bearing in mind, I'm like 11 or 12 in this this at this set time so like my my handling of spicy food is never oh. ever too good uh-huh. and um i get spicy peppers so i'm constantly running downstairs to the toilet to go rinse my mouth with water <laughs> and on one of the trips i ended up like tripping up oh you tripped and, and you fucking hold a doozy uh, I fell down the stairs and whacked my hand on, like, one of those, like, really solid uh, pottery plant pots. Nice job. And um, I broke my wrist. And then six or, well, six to seven weeks later, I had a an Asian doctor that didn't have a clue to what he was doing. All right. To get the, I had, like, metal pins in my wrist to, uh, like, bring the bone back up, like, level it up now. And he just, he didn't know how to get rid of them, so he just stuck a knife in my wrist and grabbed these pins out. Sweet. So that, you know, that's my broken wrist story. But uh, when I wanted to grow up, I wanted to be a footballer or a policeman. I had like a police car toy kind of thing, like where I sat in this car and it made all the noises and went oh, quite go. fast. And I was oh. always in there. Yeah, here we go getting that bloody fire alarm. Mm. Yeah, it's not even true. It probably doesn't come through unless I talk. Maybe. But continue. Um, okay, what was the worst situation you've been able to talk yourself out of? Like, what was the worst situation you've been really, offered uh, to talk yourself out of? I really have never, I never really had one of those situations. Um, I've... Um... I I kind of uh, have one, but uh, I guess one of the worst situations that really wasn't one of the worst would be a, a man offered, well, said, you know, come in my car, I've got some sweets for you, and I kind of said no. Oh, now, yeah. I guess you can kind of put that up there with it, but it's not like really like the worst situation you could be in. Yeah. Um, What is the weirdest thing you've seen at a friend's house that, that they thought was completely normal. Again, that's uh, never happened to me. Uh, um, I've had um, like this person used to hang. Um, like his mum and dad used to hang around. Um, hung um, like weird paintings. Yeah. And he always thought it was normal, but like these, they were like paintings of like nude people. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of weird, you know. Not you don't walk into every house and see like a nude photo of people on the wall. Yeah, most people don't expect that. Mm. So you know that's kind of weird. Okay, um, what is the baddest person to have ever lived, based upon uh, like history or things that have happened in your town? What's the baddest person well, that has ever uh, lived? Oh, people are going to hate me for not saying it, but I think the worst person in history, I have to say, the worst, you know, the most evil person I have to say is Barack Obama. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think I mean, a lot of people would, would agree with you, to be honest. Oh, <clears throat> I, I think with this question, you can, you can, um, you can kind of debate whether you want to go to it like a different section of like whether you think like um, you know some people might may think that anyone who is a rapist is the baddest person to live you know anyone that thinks um, that is a, a pedophile is the baddest thing to it's the baddest person to live you know anyone that is based upon like one of those sections is kind of like the baddest person to live under yeah. that category. But, I mean, people say, like, uh, a lot of people say Hitler and everything like this. Yeah, but, that's what everybody would say. You know, actually, a proven fact is is that Hitler wasn't actually that bad. It was actually his kind of, like, secretary kind of person that was bad. He was the one that told Hitler to say that we need to kill all these Jews. Mm -hmm. um, I've certainly seen a lot of, like, Holocaust movies. That talk about this guy and documentaries. Yeah. That say this guy was what 
provoked Hitler, like what made him angry about the Jews, so he pretty much convinced him. Um, <clears throat> our last question of the night is, who was the worst teacher you've had and why? Ooh, this is a good one. Hmm. Oh, this was back in 7th and 8th grade, or 7th or 8th grade, I'm not sure which one. <laughs> Um, I think it was eighth grade. Yeah, eighth grade. I think name was Mr. Gibson. He was uh-huh. a he was a black uh, teacher. We have this class called re, you know uh, reading proficiency and math proficiency. Mm-hmm. Now, usually, you know, it used to be where people took it because they you know didn't pass a certain amount of you know. They couldn't pass a certain class, and they'd go there for you know extra help. For yeah. You, but then they made it mandatory for everybody to take it. So that's what they did. They made I hate that class so much. I hate that teacher <laughs> so much. He he didn't fucking teach a thing. All he did was pretty much flirt with the girls. <laughs> yeah. I've um. Oh wait, did your story go on or? Yeah, I can. I gotta say one more thing. Another thing that pisses me off is teachers that don't do their goddamn job correctly. Mm. I mean, based on a sense of like what was the worst teacher, I, I had one that had uh, that was close to um, kind of retirement, but should have just quit teaching altogether because what he would do is right in a, an important uh, time of year. So this is. In year 10 and 11, which are like our final two years of school over here, we have like really important exams that will... Yeah, as we do here. Yeah. Um, And I had him as a teacher. Yeah. And he had uh, diabetes, which if he didn't have Uh, his... If he didn't have his amount of sugar, right, correctly in his body, he would fall asleep. Yeah. So he used to fall asleep during lessons and we wouldn't teach... We wouldn't learn anything. He would just fall asleep, you know. Um, that that's kind of like the worst teacher I've had. But I've also had um, I've also had my school actually had the head teacher convicted as a pedophile. What your principal or? Yeah, principal as a pedophile. He was found oh, guilty shit. of being a pedophile. Damn. So, I guess that would also be our worst. Well, he didn't really teach much, but oh yeah, the principal you know, didn't teach shit. Yeah. But, God, that'd be weird though. Yeah, like he's just such a pedophile. And yet it's you like get you're in back. trouble. It's like you're in trouble going to his class. You're like, well, okay, what am I gonna do? What am I I'll gonna s- do? I'll see you at my office. Brings his whip out. Yeah, I know. It's all Shabang. yeah. It's like yeah. <laughs> Pull those panties You're down. down. Fucking fire alarm again. <laughs> Bloody hell. But uh, I'm out of topics to talk about. Do you have anything that you can uh, think of? Oh, that is it, mate. All right. I guess we'll end this podcast here. We've been going for two hours and 33 minutes pretty much. Um, so, yeah, me and Steven, uh, we have a new series of Minecraft to bring back. Um, Minecraft. We're not exactly sure of what days we'll be uploading um, and what days we'll be recording, etc. But the first episode will go out next week, and then we'll continue. Um, I think me and Stephen now can pretty much say that we will keep this podcast every week now. Yes. So, I mean, regardless of if David's here or if we can get a guest, me and Stephen will we'll do some kind of podcast yeah, uh, we'll every week. So, you know, whether it be like a, an hour or two or under an hour, you know, some people say, like, it's long, it's too long, it's too short, you know, etc. We'll just go for as long as we can uh, until the topics go, you know. So Down, yeah. Um, but I, I think we pretty much needed... Uh, a good podcast to hit off the home run, and I think it's safe to say the Gamers podcast is back on track now. So you can expect these every week. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you did enjoy. If you did, please do leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out the playlist of this series, and remember to check out mine and Steven's uh, Minecraft series. Uh, I think we'll at least get one episode out every week, maybe two every week. So be sure to check that out. Yeah. 
Be sure to check that out. We'll see you guys next time. Have a wonderful day, and thank you for watching. And we do apologize.